sing it like you know they are God's property. Say Abba. One more time, say Abba. Abba. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. More head of a Hesha Hesop. Sing it like you mean it. I belong. I belong. I belong to you. One more time, say Abba. I belong. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 in the Passion Translation. Open your mouth and just pray in the Holy Ghost everywhere you are right now. The Holy Spirit brings permanent power, but the Holy Spirit does not bring a feeling of permanent power does not bring a permanent feeling of power the holy spirit brings permanent power but the holy spirit does not bring permanent feeling of power the holy spirit brings power but the holy spirit does not bring permanent feeling of power i say to feel i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus I might not look like righteousness but I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus when you hear about me everything that you hear about me might not align to what your mindset of what righteousness should be but I am righteous because of what Christ has done just open your mouth and yell out your edification I belong to you Abba I am yours I am forever yours I am always with you because you are in me it is full of calm i have the spirit of god always i belong to you jesus i belong to you jesus pray in the holy ghost where you are right now Ganons, Ganons, as of a dumb, being a survivors, being a survivors, Berondesos, Berondonsas, Zinandos, Shunema Mahaso, Pulutu Kande, Kenan Mahale, Hele Malia Tava, on the membrun to Kus, Burivanda, Superlada Hashto, Weather, 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 Vina Mina Mana, Zunema Mahate Pande Komaha, Rememasto Penavandropo, Inemeti Pala Hashto. Do we have tongue talking believers here? Speaking your heavenly language, speaking the spirit lingua. I belong to you. That's what you're saying in tongues. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I belong to you. I belong to you. I am one with you. Jesus said that they may be one with us, just like I am one with you. I am one with you. I am one with you. God doesn't do one night stand. I am one with you. I have you every time. I have you. Even though I walk by myself into the valley of the shadow of death, even though I'm not led into the valley of the shadow of death, even though I'm the one walking there, I believe the rod and the staff that are comforting me. I believe the shepherd's rod, the shepherd's staff is still there. I am led. God leads me like Bible day. Something different in this service. I'm telling you right now. Just keep playing that tune. I belong to you. Shoot them a hassle. When I take a mando shell, Elmaton Bone, Usamaya, Utapanendo, Sumanando, Ina 
direct the power over that dead thing direct the power over that dead situation on a nine no so will a man of a mile when am my sober somebody stop being conscious about i'm talking to somebody right now stop being conscious about yourself greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world somebody get conscious about the man in you the man christ jesus whatever you do do it whether in words or in deeds do it in the name i come in the name of jesus I come in the name of Jesus. Selamanaha, Shelamadaha. Get on a man and Tesaya. Kiramaha. What a word, what a word. Vive on, vive on people. 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 Fina Matel, Fina Matopondes, Fina Manekombom Bombel, I belong to you. Viva Nabrato Son, Katakata Monomala, Sepetula Mate Dan Don I love the fact that you're praying. I love the fact that you're conscious of your God man status. Mame Nemo, Mame de Bene, Mame Move Vana Moai, Water with the water. Can condendina remedemana sopo. There is a remedy for that situation. It's in the name. Somebody use the name. It's in the name. Get conscious. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Because of his reputation. Somebody ain't going down. Because of his reputation. Everything has got to align. God's name is at stake because you always said in the name of Jesus. Because you always called on the name of Jesus. Because you always said you belong to Jesus. God took notice of that. Heaven took notice of that. Angels took notice of that. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I don't feel like stopping. There's something here. There's something, there's something here. Somebody use the name. Hey, I read in my Bible, in the book of Acts, Paul, looking on the man who was crippled, saw that he had faith to believe. Paul, if you read your scriptures well said, rise up and walk. I didn't hear Paul say, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Paul didn't have to call the name. Paul knew that he was in the name whatever you do in words or in deed do it with the consciousness of the name for at the name of jesus not at the mention at the name of jesus break it down now father I belong to you For my life is healed with Christ and God say Abba say yeah. I can hear you I belong to you One more time say Abba 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 I belong, belong, I belong to Listen, God will not do anything new. This is not what I plan to pray about, but God will not do anything new. God has done everything already. I was discussing with the members of the SWAT team some days ago, and I told them how that nobody has come into this life looking for oxygen or carbon dioxide to breathe but god provided oxygen and carbon dioxide in genesis 1. so nobody comes praying for oxygen nobody comes praying for carbon dioxide all they do is breathe 
you are a God man as you inhale the word of God your natural is to exhale the word of God and that is why you are talking that's why you are you are praying God does not react I'm saying this because when we begin to pray right now I don't want you to pray as if the answer to the prayer is coming from somewhere else outside of you the answer to the prayer was hid in Christ in the salvation package that was delivered to you in your spirit if your mind does not grasp this your spirit believes it this is how you can get answers to your prayer because you know the answer is not coming from outside that's why the son Jesus is the answer for the world today Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 the biggest prayer for the righteous man for the believer is to know because the reason you pray some prayers is because you are ignorant that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination sometimes when you pray God gives you pictures because your imagination is part of how you process answers exceeding above all that you can ask or think imagine so it's part of the process so what God does is he floods your imagination with light until you exp so the experiencing of the full revelation of the hope of his calling is dependent on how much you have received the flooding in your imagination that's why we listen to the word of god that's why we stay in the gospel that is the wealth of god's glorious inheritance that he finds in us his holy ones are you ready to pray are you ready to pray you know as much as we want to command resources command angels sometimes all you need for profit is revelation i'm saying it because there are certain people who are here who have commanded and who have declared but just in case you have been ignoring the voice that has been speaking to you god sent me to to re-echo it again you will come into profit by revelation it's not for everybody those who know it's for them have said amen to it already you are coming into profit by revelation daniel chapter 2 verse 46 quickly daniel chapter 2 verse 46 the king that asked daniel a dream or asked his wise men to tell him the dream that he dreamt he wanted the interpretation but he doesn't want to tell them the dream that he dreamt he wants them to tell him the dream and the interpretation so when daniel heard about it and knew that they were going to kill them if they did not have the meaning and the dream he went on his knees and prayed and that same night he saw somebody's dreams daniel is not born again the holy spirit does not live inside of him some people are carrying the Holy Ghost to go and beg for money. When Daniel finished speaking, King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face in awe before Daniel. Daniel is his subject, but the king is falling before his subject. Remember what Pastor Obina says, king don't bow to kings. But this king bowed to the king of kings. You are the God man walking around with the king of kings inside of you who has made you kings and priests. But the way that they will know that God is really in you is not just about your talking. It's in the manifestation. And then people say you have to pay the price for the power. You don't pay any price for the power because the power is a gift we went to school you cannot pay for gifts the price you have to pay is the price of going around to use the power so he bowed down before him 
and he said your god is beyond question the god of all gods the master of all kings and he solves all mysteries i know because you have solved this mystery he would not have known except god showed himself through daniel or except daniel showed god to nebuchadnezzar are you ready let me just show you this from the epistles Paul speaking in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 25 look at what paul says paul says and toss at the secret of his heart made manifest this is paul talking about when you prophesy i didn't want to go verses above he says that when you review the secret of the heart of somebody they will fall down on their face and worship god and report that god is in you of a truth and this is what happened to an old testament daniel are you ready are you ready put a declaration on screen that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened say after me my understanding listen if you don't need revelation leave it see do you know the benefit of hearing from god it cuts stress it, sometimes you just hear from God about something that's coming in the future and you just stop laboring. It brings you to rest. It brings you to rest. Say after me, my understanding is flooded with light. See, as silence as, as this is, is powerful. Because LFC, the, 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 the strength of the prayer is not in the volume of your shout is in the depths of your com conviction say again my understanding i belong to you don't get over there is flooded with light henceforth i know the hope of god's calling in my life henceforth i know the hope of god's calling in my life my will is in tuned with the will of god to know things i wouldn't have naturally known henceforth my will is in tuned with the will of god to know things i wouldn't have naturally known henceforth henceforth i make practice of your word by the spirit and by revelation I do exploits. For I am the people that know their God and I will do exploits. For I am the person that knows my God in Christ and I will do exploits. I prophesy, I prophesy I am the answer to someone's problem. <laughs> I am the answer to someone's problem. I am the answer to someone's problem. I am the answer to my organization's problem. I am the answer to my family's problem. I am the answer to my nation's problem. As I pray now, as I pray now, I download solutions. I download solutions that have already been uploaded in my spirit at salvation. I download solutions that has already been uploaded in my spirit at salvation. Some of the best way to pray this prayer is in tongues. If you are not filled with the gift of utterance, you may just step out right now and i will touch you in one instance you will speak and your eyes will be flooded with light you may not even need to come to me the brother beside you has the power when you tell them the secrets that are in their heart they will bow down before you and they will say of the truth god is in you somebody it is time for you to manifest your god man status somebody's time for you to take advantage of that trouble 
to take advantage of that situation of that circumstance of that sickness of that lack of that limitation I belong to you I am in you Christ in you is the hope of glory I know believers don't like to pray this but I tell you this is the shortest cut to where you need to be there is no dilly dally in here there is no merry-go-round in here there is no going in circles here you know precisely what to do I download solutions right now somebody begin to simulate begin to experience things in the future now in the place of prayer the same way that military people when there is no war they simulate battles in their training camps somebody you are in your training space right now begin to simulate the same way that when there is no fire your company think it's very important to do a fire drill in case of the future somebody you are going out on hot as you simulate right now that fire i prophesy was not sent to burn you that fire was allowed in your life to refine you oh god somebody that fire you're going through right now was not sent to burn you life happens but god knows how to paraite that fire's not gonna burn you that fire will refine you gold when it goes through fire is purer is even more refined is of more value somebody you have your value is more than gold silver and gold have i known such as i have is more than gold that fire wasn't sent upon you that flood did not come to carry you away it came to carry you to your destiny i'm talking to somebody right now that water was allowed to wash away some unnecessity oh my well well mala fina mabrina meda bem 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 wina masena ha tell ah tomar tell ah the man of phone man do wa somalara ha jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 don't stop praying come on amala oh lord i know the way of a man is not in himself it is not in man who walks to direct his own step you cannot trust on your own understanding it is not in the way of a man to know where to go but he leads me he leads me in the path of righteousness he leads me he leads me somebody God leads you like Bible day he leads me I'm not without the leading of the spirit I'm not without the leading of the spirit my steps my steps are ordered for the step of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord he leads me he leads me he leads me God leads me like Bible days I am not bereft of the leading of the Spirit of God I know his will I practice his, his voice I practice his words I practice his instruction when I'm all, somebody you're just you're, you're just growing up right now you're praying the right prayers your eye gates your ear gates are flooded with revelation right now Kelamaha, he that speaketh in tongues 
speak at mysteries how be it he speaketh unto God when the saint am I it is not in the way of a man to direct his own steps but my way is in the way I got the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the truth and he is how I go through life I got life for life I got manana. I got life for life he leads me beside the still waters every time I feel like I don't know what to do I get at the still waters it's the perfect law of liberty it's the mirror of God's war I check it hey as many as are born of the spirit they are led come on right now I check the word I know green pastures is my normal I got a shepherd I got a shepherd come on right now don't stop praying give me Isaiah 50 Ken again we have not even gone half our prayer today he leads me the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary he wakens me morning by morning he wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed don't take it off somebody after this prayer you will get up with an instruction in the morrow you will somebody welcome to the best days of your life when a man who said Maya somebody welcome the best days of your life are here right now I'm assured because morning by morning new message you say morning by morning he awakens your ear to hear it is God and man you are the God man you know oh male male vene vene my baba dombai give me the next verse morning by morning I'm instructed I know whom not to call I know who to call oh mama Shena men I must survive her when am I time her can I'm on come on right now seal on my heart this week my wife came to me we needed to sort some bills I didn't have a dime guess what I told her I'm not gonna pray about it he gives me my daily bread I'm not gonna pray about it but when I said I'm not gonna pray about it he gives me my daily bread I had just exhaled what I inhaled in the book of Matthew that same evening I got a fat lot he leads me he le I know who I am he leads me no 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 he leads me where before for Hoa Say na na the next day, even today, I got another one. I said, Father knows that I need bread. I'm not gonna pray about bread. I got the bread. So mama shaya. I just said, open my eyes. Oh my Lenaya. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. Somebody, you will begin to hear. The devil and your mind will suggest that is your mind. God sent me to tell you, I have opened your ears as you hear. Practice his voice. Don't be rebellious. Do not turn away. Turn unto him. Repent unto him. The verse before says, morning by morning, he wakes my ear to hear. You don't have to stop. Give me the next slide of the declaration. The 
don't stop playing don't stop praying i am sought after i am a person of high demand because of the supply of the spirit i am not depending on my own self i place a demand on the supply of the spirit listen brothers listen sisters you will not see the supply unless you place a demand it is economics of the word of god i i am a person of high demand somebody i know you didn't look like you meant anything but i hear god say we will not sit until you bring me that david that person in the backside we will not sit because guess what everybody they bring the oil will not flow what i'm saying is the deal will not be tears because you were predestined oh man now no shy seven and a five henceforth i have a track record of bringing solutions in my industry he awakens my ears morning by morning i was not rebellious so i have a track record of solutions don't stop praying don't stop praying simple declaration i am sought after Rokotombe Sevedele Mahai de Bella. Sought after. O party do boho shenamende. Men are coming for me. Here are Bahambe Combatombe. Some of these world nations are coming for me. The kings of the land are calling for me. Can you pray? Men don't sally Bahia. Rokabonde Shombre Kapatande. Great men are coming for me. Tata Tata Kapalaga Dene Mahelegadine Mahia. Men are coming for me. Rokabonde Shombre Kebalate Kandia. Men are coming for me. Kings of the earth are looking for me. Don't come, Bella de Catina Mahela. Great men are searching for me. Reprehendo Sombre Ida Bahia. Or Abahata by skies, the star of David, the bright and early morning star. So great men are looking for me. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. Great men are looking for me right now. My shoulder was rock up on Don Combo Shire. Rupalata Lagadena Megadena. Rupanana Mahanda Basha. Great men follow my staff. Great men follow my staff. In the Mahaya Bella come the door will have it. In Jesus' name. Come on, I said in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. One more time in Jesus' name. Lift your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Great men follow my staff. Great men follow my staff. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Say again. Say, great men follow my star. Great men follow my star. The Bible says, when Jesus was born, do you know how the wise men saw Jesus? They followed his star. I decree that from today, wise men are coming. They are chasing after you. Oh, my, 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 my. Every aura and everything around you that brings the wrong people to you, maybe the way you carry yourself, the way you dress, the way you behave, we decree today, we put an end to it in the name of Jesus. That from today the right men are chasing after you. Are you listening to me? Bible says goodness and mercies are running after me. I decree you are sought after. They are looking for you. Are you listening to me? I said they are looking for you. They looked for Jesus, even went to Herod, and Herod told them, If you find him, bring him to me. Because Herod was looking for him too. Men are looking for you in the name of Jesus from today i prophesy who has faith to receive it you will no longer long, long, no longer look for your helpers your helpers are looking for you oh maybe that's not your word this is a prophetic word for somebody and i don't know where you're sitting standing in this room god sent me to tell you that from today you will no longer run after your helpers they are looking for you they are calling you back now I said they are looking for you they are calling you back now i hear the lord say they are entrusting you with resources i don't know whose word is this they are entrusting you with resources they are entrusting you with resources great men and helpers are looking for you 
in the name of Jesus lift your right hand say in the name of Jesus in the name of I Jesus I am sought after I am sought after because I command the favor because of God because I command the favor of because God because I carry the favor of because God because I carry the favor and I am of the God. solution to the problems and I am the solution to the that problems that are around me that are around me so I decree and declare so I decree and declare great men are looking for great me great men are looking for great me great men are searching for great me great men are searching the for me the favor of God the favor of is God compelling men is compelling men to run towards to me run towards in me. the name of Jesus of from Jesus today, from today I stop chasing, I after, stop men chasing after men because goodness and mercy because goodness and mercy are chasing after me are chasing after so the me. grace of God so the grace of is God compelling men is compelling to come after my to work call after my in, word. The in the name of Jesus I decree in the claim I, decree in the claim. I do not lack clients, do not lack clients. In, the in the name of Jesus there is a mighty supply, there's a mighty supply. There is a rush. there's a rush in the name of Jesus, in the name of now, Jesus. now open up your mouth and press Looking for me, men are searching for me. 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 God is announcing your brand. God is announcing what you do. Divine announcement. I hear it in my spirit. Divine announcement. Whose word is this evening? In the name of Jesus. We're going to pray. Divine announcement. Stay with me. Stay with me. The Bible says at Jesus' baptism, the heavens cracked open, a voice shouting loud, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Without Twitter, without Facebook, without IG, without YouTube, without sponsored post, the heaven announced Jesus at baptism. I decree, whatever you do, I decree, whatever you do, that there is divine announcement. I don't care listen to me i don't care how and you should do that please i'm not discouraging you to put your product out there but i'm saying to you without the divine announcement from god people will see it and it will not stay but if god announces it it will, ampl it will, it will amplify whatever you decide to do are you listening to me and what i hear in my spirit is the time for divine announcement the, whatever you do is being announced to the right people to the right people to the right people one time david saul was being tormented and they needed an instrumentalist somebody announced david that's the son of jc he's good looking he's skillful and the lord is with him i prophesy welcome to divine announcement i'm saying whatever you do will be announced globally can you can you pray for the next four minutes or five Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me say this to you. Because there are some of you, it will not be in the volume, it will be in the value. Let me explain. You may just have four clients who are worth 40,000 people. Are you understanding me? I, I, even if I tell somebody now that you are going to be a policeman, the person will feel like I just insulted him. But the policeman that stands behind the president is not just a policeman. His client is your is the president. Are you understanding me? Are you listening to me? Please don't take this prayer for granted. What I hear in my spirit is God is bringing men of value to you. Men of value to you. It will not be in the volume, but when God announces you, value comes to you. Lift your right hand. So I am saying there are some of you in the next two years, it may just be three clients. 
three people because when god wants to bless you he brings you to one man he's one once you listen to me I. okay once you find that one man stay there it may be just one pastor one person that person can unlock the remaining things in your life D don't be stupid don't be stupid but i'm saying what i hear in my spirit is divine announcement Lift your hands say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare that that which I do. That that which is I do announced is announced in the places where it matters. In the places where it matters. Rada da bakate so. So no me. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. So I was chatting with an uncle yesterday. He just ran down me. Just said, I greeted him. And he says, okay, I was having a high delegate meeting and your name showed up. I'm like, why? So we were talking about one scripture and then somebody said, no, 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 no. There's a way one pastor flourish. And you know, explain this scripture. I was not even there. That he, that come and see the pride. He's... <laughs> You're going to announce you. Yeah. No, it's not for you. It's for your neighbor. So it's okay. Yeah. You're going to announce you. Yeah. It's a small clip. It's something you did. It's just a snippet. It's something that you don't even consider important. Something you posted. Something that was said about you. Somebody who heard you speak. Somebody who encountered you. But that is... I prophesy as I hear in my spirit lift your hands in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let's pray it for like two minutes so we can go straight to God's word say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I decree and declare I, decree and declare, I am divinely announced I am divinely in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the places that matter 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 in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus my product my product the works of my hand the works of my hand into rooms, Get into rooms that my legs, that my legs have not gotten into yet gotten into by, the favor, of by God. the favor of God I decree and declare I, and I enjoy divine announcement, enjoy divine announcement. The, days of introducing the days of introducing myself and explaining myself, and explaining myself are, over. are over that before I show up in the place, in the place my testimony, my testimony would have gone, ahead, would have of gone ahead of me in the name of, in the Jesus, name of Jesus I decree and declare, I decree and declare. It, is my it is my season of divine announcement so I decree and declare so the, the Lord knows about me the right me. places the right know about me about in, me. The, name in the name of Jesus now open up your mouth and pray through oh God 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 oh listen to me you have two more minutes on this praise from oh God oh God oh God oh God oh God Beledina Mahande Sunya who shot at Tata at the bend on Combelegadina Mahaya Wata Kabata I cannot be hidden at a bata the light in my family. I cannot be hidden at a bata the light in my family. We cannot be hidden. The Lord and the churches to every part of the gospel of the Lord. All the data globally, and we cannot be hidden. It is the season of our divine announcement. Open up your mouth and pray. Jesus name glory to God something it's our last prayer when we go to when we go to the word of God I, I, I sense it it may not be for everybody but God spoke to me just now about the multipliers anointing it's something that was said here on Sunday is hanging over this atmosphere. 
is the multiplier's anointing. The multiplier's anointing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I don't have to shout to tell you, but I'm telling you, I heard God clearly. I can point some of you out. The multiplier's anointing. It's not from 1 to 2, from 1 to 10, from 10 to 50, 50 to 100. Quantum, you see? Listen to me. Lift your hand, okay. Let's go. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. I come into the multipliers and I come into the multipliers and In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come into the multipliers and I come into the multipliers and knowledge. Exponential increase. Exponential increase. Exponential growth. Exponential growth. Exponential increase. Exponential increase. Exponential growth. Exponential growth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now open up your mouth and pray. Don't take a bit of that. I release it upon this house. The multipliers anointed. The multipliers anointed. Exponential growth. The multipliers anointed. From zero to one. To ten. To twenty. To twenty. To fifty. Open up your mouth and pray. Give God praise. Give God praise. If you can wave your hands to Jesus and then scream, I have the multipliers anointed. I have the multipliers anointed. So nothing dies in my hand. Nothing dies in my hand. Nothing just dies in my hand. Nothing just dies. But I have the multipliers anointed. I have the multipliers anointed. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. If you know this is your word, look at your neighbor and tell them it's talking about me. It's talking about everything multiplies in my hand. Everything multiplies in my hand. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Amen. It's good to be back. I missed you all on Sunday, but I heard you guys had a blast on Sunday. And that's, that's beautiful to know that you guys enjoyed yourselves in the presence of God. The power and the importance of a great house is that when the leader is not around, you are still able to have beautiful time amen i shouldn't be the conduit of the experience of god at every gathering you know what i mean yeah but so i want to thank god for pastor larry thank you so much i watched first service before i was rushing to preach at the london church and it was rich i'm like okay he gonna kill me the second service and he brought it and he brought it yeah so i took him out i'm like do xyz abc and then that was it, amen. I didn't even watch Second Service. I know that it was powerful, amen. Were you blessed on Sunday? Were you blessed on Sunday? Don't worry, I'm back, yeah? Glory to God. Greetings from London Church. We had a beautiful time. Church is growing rapidly. I didn't send pictures. I would have showed you pictures. We had a great time. Um, beautiful experience in London Church. Had the LFC and LDC graduation. And then we had baby dedication. About a hundred and... 17, 20 plus, there are about people. So church is growing remarkably, remarkably in London church. Amen. And they did everything to trap me there, but God, but God delivered me from a certain individual who was going to steal my passport, but God, but God, God, they didn't find the passport. Amen. And I'm right here. Glory to God. Amen. I want to take questions from Sunday. If you have questions from Sunday, if I can't answer them, the preacher is somewhere here. <laughs> he will come and explain what he preached. Oh, and, you, and I think I have backlog from last week. But there's something he said that I want to share with you, just so you understand the, the Bible. And maybe, maybe I'll go back to it on Sunday. Well, I don't know. Let's as God gives me the too many things in my spirit to share. The, the Bible has a bias. The Bible has a bias. Now, if you understand the bias of the Bible, it helps you. If you understand the bias of the Bible, it helps you understand the Bible accurately. Jesus is the bias of the Bible. Are you listening to me? The purpose of the scripture 
is for Jesus because Jesus is the word of God. So if you read your Bible and you don't see Jesus, you have not read accurately. You don't read your Bible to look at history. You, look, you read your Bible to see Jesus. Jesus is the bias. The content of the scriptures is about Jesus. So if you are looking at the Bible to find something else than Jesus, you may not find it or you, find, or you see something else. And that from a child that has known the Hagios Graphe, that is able to make the wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So that scripture, what it means is the purpose of theology, those of you who are my old members, you know that, is for what? Christology. So without Christology, theology is useless. It's theology that validates Christology. It's Christology that validates theology. So any search for God, which is theology, that doesn't bring you to Jesus, you have missed God in its entirety and totality. You know, somebody was asking me um, recently, um, so when Cain and Abel, they're now married, so who, who did they marry? I'm like, you think you find that in the Bible? The Bible is not a history book, it's Jesus' book. So any information that is not necessary to Jesus is not there, you find it too. So let me help you. So when you start having those questions, hey, so Adam and Eve, so they now marry. Who did they now marry? Who did not? Have you, have you seen those? So who gave birth to this? So when they now, when Cain left, so who did Cain now go and marry? So no, 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 no. It is not necessary, so it's not in the scripture. It's endless genealogy. The Bible says, do not get involved in arguments around what? Endless genealogies. It's not the purpose of the scriptures. The purpose of the scripture is Jesus. So once you find Jesus, genealogy ends. Oh. Uh -uh, you don't know? Once you find Jesus, that's the end of genealogy. So all those, so what happened? Who, who now gave birth to this? So is the mother of this? It is unnecessary. The Bible has one agenda, Jesus. Every other thing is not important. So Matthew chapter 1, let me show you something in Matthew chapter 1. Um, this scripture is good, Titus 3, 9, but avoid foolish questions. I'm, I'm serious. Avoid fool. So there are some questions that are foolish questions. I don't even answer you. Is there? You know, you know when you talk now, they'll say, ah, people, that's too harsh. But that's still Bible. You're asking a foolish question. But if I tell you you're acting foolish, you're angry. So usually I just send them the Bible. Fight the Bible. Don't fight me. Avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Can I have this in TPT and message before I go to the scripture I want to show you briefly? Um, have me, give me TPT. But avoid useless controversies. Genealogies, pointless quarrels. So you know that the person who's asking this question, it does not make sense. He just wants to argue. And because I did philosophy as my first degree, I can tell your, the, where you are going to from your argument. I'm like, it's, it's no, I don't even have the time. Over law, which will get you nowhere. Because the place that you need to get to is Jesus. If you miss Jesus, you are going nowhere. Are you listening to me? So if you miss Jesus, you are going nowhere. Jesus is the destination. In scripture, Jesus is the journey and the destination in scripture. Once you miss the way, you are entered bush because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You see, give me this thing stay away from mindless, pointless quarreling over genealogies and fine print in the law that gets you nowhere. One, a quarrel, some person once is twice, and then be done with him. This is Bible. All of you that want me to be holy, Adam, be by Bible. Bible is, Bible, the Bible calls people out. They call you out. Mm. Talk to me harshly. That's your Bible. It's obvious that such a person is out of line, rebellious against God. By persisting in divisiveness, he cuts himself off. You see what I'm saying? Let me go back to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. I want to show you something. So the genealogy ends with Jesus. Jesus is the end of this begat this. <laughs> yes. This begat this. Next verse. Two. And this begat three. This begat four. This begat five. This begat six. This begat seven. This begat eight. This begat nine. 
this begat. 10, this begat. 11, this begat. 12, then the begat they go. 13, begat. 14, begat. 15, begat. Go to 16 now. And Jacob begat Joseph, the son of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Full stop. The next verse, you, you're not thinking like Jesus begat. So all the generations from Abraham to David. So he got to the destination. Period. So who did Jesus begat? You and I. The believer. So the new creation. So Jesus is the end of genealogies. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you don't open your Bible and start looking for what happened? What, what was in Sodom and Gomorrah? No, it is Genesis. Let's look, let's look at this it way. No, no, that's not the purpose of the Bible. Look at this Bible. And what, what happened here? No, no, Jesus is the genealogies in Scripture. So when they get to Jesus, there was nothing else to be got. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Do you, get what, do you appreciate what I'm saying? So Jesus is the end of genealogies. You see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> there was nothing to be got. So after that, just see verse 17. So all the generations, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus was this wise. Go to verse 18. Now the birth, So after they got to Jesus, they started again with Jesus. After they ended with Jesus, now the birth of Jesus was in this wise. That means they finished Jesus. They now started again with Jesus. Are you seeing this? So when you start looking for something that is not Jesus in scripture, and so, but this Noah, but this ark, but this, you are just wasting your time. The Bible has a bias. Jesus is the bias of the scripture. And the purpose of Jesus is what? Salvation. Theology gives birth to Christology. Christology gives birth to soteriology. I read my Bible to know about Christ. And once I find Christ, I see the salvation plan. Because the purpose of that theology is for Christology. And when you find Christology, it brings you to what? Soteriology. Salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. End of discussion. So the Bible is a Christocentric material. It's not a philosophical material. There's a reason why the Bible is the way it is. So it's important. So it helps you with Bible study. That until you see Jesus, you're just missing the point because Jesus is the scriptures. The Bible says Jesus is the word of God. Do you understand that? And I like the four things he mentioned about salvation on Sunday. If you have that, that thing again. Um, um, the finished work, inheritance in Christ Jesus, identity in Christ Jesus. Identity in Christ Jesus delivers to you your inheritance in Christ and your abilities in Christ. The finished work of Christ brings the believer to the identity. The identity in Christ Jesus is the core. So, when you go to a church, let me just give you a heads up. Hmm? Let's talk this evening. And you don't, the whole of the message, there was no, nothing around here. You went to a business meeting. Went to a family gathering. You went to Parakbo. I'm telling you, if you go to any church meeting and there's no finished work of Christ, you do not find anything that just shows your identity in Christ Jesus. Then you don't hear about your inheritance in Christ then there is nothing about your abilities in Christ. My dear, there is a problem. Run for your life. Because that's the core. Even if I say something else, you to be around it. So I, I don't want to invalidate this. This is good enough. This is powerful. This is a pointer. Whether the ongoing work is here. Redemption, di divine exchange, propitiation, everything is here. Everything is here. So if you find a whole service, you don't hear about the finished work. Your identity, but you just hear about warfare, warfare. Let's pray. Oh, this and this. They are coming after you. You say, come after them. That's what you buy. <laughs> and then he shows you your flaws. For the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The next verse says, hearing is the righteousness of God revealed. So what the gospel does to you, it brings to you the awareness, the consciousness of the righteousness of God, not your flaws. So when you go to a meeting and they now show you your flaws, how you have messed up, how God, has, God is angry with you. 
In short, you are a disgrace to the body of Christ. Then you leave and say, Father, Father, I can do better. Father, help me to do. You cannot do better. He has done for you. Receive what he has done. That's how you do better. You see what I'm saying? So this is important. Righteous the faith, and it's, as it's written, just shall live. So this scripture is very powerful. Who is the just? The one who's been justified by the finished work of Christ Jesus. You live by faith in Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me? You get what I'm saying? So the purpose of the scripture shows you that. And every time the Bible is being preached, if it's not preached from Christology, you see a lot of things. People use Bible for all kinds. I, I dare say every other religion came out from the Bible. No jokes. Because when they studied, they were looking for something else than the word of God. So you see all kinds of demonic activities. Form strange things. Form Bible, but just abuse. When purpose is not known, misuse is what? Inevitable. Like the preacher said on Sunday, the purpose of dressing is to cover your nakedness. You see what I'm saying? It does not mean that you cannot be fashionable in your doings. But any fashion that is now taking you back to the Garden of Eden. Any fashion that is now fashion against your neighbor. You have now abused the purpose of what? Dressing. Because in your fashion, and you know, we are free, we just body positivity is a lie. It's, na it's nudity that is wrong with you. Yeah? And anything that you now fashion, your fashion, where you, you are, it is now fashioned against your neighbor, you have, you have abused the purpose of dressing. It's the same thing with a car. The purpose of a car is for mobility. Doesn't mean it shouldn't come with air conditioner systems. Some cars even have massage as you begin to drive. Some, some cars have help me good music system. But when you enter a car, it's massaging you. Then the music is really, is. but let's go now. It doesn't go. It just stays here. It's a spa. After all, all of you will not carry the car to another place. But it's supposed to take you from one end to the other end. But whilst doing that, there can be many other things that comes with it. Fine. No doubt. But they cannot invalidate the primary purpose. So the purpose of phone is for communication. But the show is for communication. Whether it's social media, communication is communication. Whether it's Facebook, is communication. It's communication, that's what it is. But when you now have a phone where it is for calculator and playing games, Netflix and your TV, but can I call? No, this phone does not call. Oh. You see what I'm saying? So the Bible has a purpose, it's salvation. But can you learn other things from it here? But that's not the purpose of the Bible. Are you seeing what I'm saying? This will help your Bible study so that you don't open the Bible and start looking for something that is not supposed to deliver to you. Are you listening to me? It's, no. And, well, I'll deal with that maybe some other time um, as God gives us strength. But you understand that. And so I think I like the ability of the way he ended that um, if I had the board, I wanted to show you guys something. Um, Oh, but it's not here. So when, when Pastor Daniel was talking about the believer has the bounce back anointed, the believer does not bounce back on one level. Because it means that your life is just going up and down. So the believer can bounce back from here and comes here again. He's bouncing from here. You, you understand what I'm saying? Then he comes to this place, he's bouncing again. He's going, so the harder he, once he bounces from here, he's not going to stay here, he's going to come here. Are you on? Do you get what I'm saying? So once the believer comes to the ground floor on this place and he's bouncing, he's not going to bounce back to this floor. So what I'm saying to you, you're not going to bounce back to where you are. You're not going to bounce back to where you left. You're not going to bounce back to where you fell from. You bounce back to where you were aiming at. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, somebody missed that already. That's a prophetic word for somebody. But you were distracted. I'm going to say it again. You're not going to bounce back to where you, you, you fell from. You're going to bounce back to where you were aiming at. 
that's how you bounce so you don't bounce on one level you bounce from this level and to another level and you keep going so it, it, my, <laughs> so so if no it's okay I, I can i can try he can try so if he bounces like this if you say the believer bounces like this the believer is just here now it's a very dull in bouncer so the believer doesn't bounce like this the believer bounces like this and then bounces again to this place the part of the righteous man shines back so the so once you hit the floor on this level bring it bring it once you hit the floor on this level it takes you to this level you see what i'm saying so what i'm saying is that when you bounce from this place you're not going to go back here you're going to go back up and when you bounce from here you're going to go up and you just keep going who's excited about that so your life is not going to look like where you bounce from no no you're going to bounce to another level amen if this was my old school church i was saying bouncing in there lord <laughs> bouncing 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 I'm bouncing in the Lord. Amen. You see what I'm saying? So you're not going to bounce back to that old house. You're going to bounce back to another level. In the name of Jesus. Are you excited about that? That's the truth about bounce back. Any question? I think I have some questions today. Would Any question in the room about that? Or any question from last week? Anything that we need to deal with? Um, Pastor, if you have from your end, can I take some questions? Anyone in the room, questions or you want me to throw light on anything that was taught on Sunday or something? You've been, if this is your first midweek service, that's how we do. We take questions on Wednesdays because it's important um, that we, if that's how I check where, how, you are, how you're understanding what we're saying. Glory to God. What's happening there? Wow. You're going to bounce back in Jesus' name. Amen. I so said you're going to bounce back in Jesus' name. Amen. And so in the scriptures, let me, let me just speaking before they bring the questions i think we have two three the details in the scriptures show you jesus so i think in the bible you'll find some clues here and there in the old testament and they're all pointing to christ everything is showing you jesus everything is showing you the details everything is showing you all that god has done in christ for you simon are you good pastor Larry, are we good can can i have the questions please and that's, that's going to show you Jesus. Amen. How many of you have, how many of you have started reading the Bible and you're seeing it differently? I'm serious. Talk to me. How many of you that in your Bible study you are beginning to see differently? That you can read the Old Testament and say, okay, you know, this is just for them. This is not for us. So you know what is written to you and what is written for you. You know what is written to you and what is written for you. Are you listening to me? Yeah, um, Auntie Rita says, "People, please help me buttress more on communion for my auntie. She's a strong believer in the power of communion, and her backup is always Jesus said, do this and remember. We've dealt with this too many times. I'll send us a mail and I'll give you comprehensive feedback. I don't want to be dealing with all this. These are not important things. If she wants to chop bread and wine, let her. Dude, I've explained this too many times. I can't see. I need, to, I need a different question. I'm sorry. Yes. Let me hear from you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good good morning. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Ah. <laughs> good, I'm so sorry. Good night, too. Good <laughs> okay, oh, good evening. Okay. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for the privilege. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Um, this is almost my this is my first service here. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, and I really consider it to be a great privilege to yeah. be amongst everybody here. So I really have a lot of theological um, theology questions that has really been bothering me. And um, you shed more light in line with it, broadened my horizon and gave me an insight to how things should really be. So my question is this. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I really have come across a lot of theology with different um, school of thought in regards to the Bible itself. I'm just waiting for the question. Okay. So, um, specifically, I would like to ask, uh, um, I stumbled upon something that said that there's a difference between Christianity and Christianity. And what? Christianity. 
Okay. Christianity. So your question will be? Okay, my question is, he said whatever it is that Paul taught mm. was purely Christianity and not Christian-based. Okay, I know what you said. So continue. So I would like to know specifically that um, if that is actually correct. Now, wow. <laughs> so let me help you. It's just, um, what do they call them again? S semantics is just, people just want to go crazy. Paul wrote the epistles, and I, let me help you. For something to be doctrine, it must have its root in Genesis. It must be in the prophecies and the prophets. It must be in the parables of Jesus, and then it's elucidated in the epistles. I'm going to say that again. For something to be called doctrine, it must have its root in Genesis. You'll find it in the prophets. You also find it in Jesus' parables and is elucidated in the epistles. One of the people who would shout about it the more would be Apostle Paul. Yeah? So Apostle Paul did not come to counter what Jesus said. Apostle Paul came to explain, elucidate what Jesus said. So all these people say, I am Christianity, Christianity. There's nowhere in the Bible where they even called us Christians. We're called believers. It was the people in Antioch who saw um, the church people behaving like Christ and they called us Christians and there's nothing wrong with that because it just means Christ like but the most important thing is that the believer what makes you a believer is that you came from cross death burial and resurrection so you cannot be a believer without believing in the cross the cross is the symbol is what holds the scriptures together the cross is the dividing point the cross changed everything. The, co the cross is the cancelling point. So any teaching that says we are Christianity, we are not Christianity, you are plain. You are not a believer if you don't believe in the cross. The cross is the basics, is the death, burial, and resurrection. That's how you even got saved. So without what Paul wrote and you believed in it, you will not even be saved. Paul wrote about what Jesus came to do. Are you listening to me? So you want to listen to my message two, two weeks ago about, what was the topic of that message again? The stone, the stench, the glory. Go on YouTube, it will help you. So don't let them deceive you. What makes you a believer is that you believe in the cross. The cross is our sign. The cross is the teaching. The cross is the emblem of our salvation. Okay? I know people who, because of what Paul taught, they are afraid to accept it. They will not say, what did Jesus teach? Not knowing that Jesus made a disclaimer. There are many things I want to say to you that you cannot hear, yeah, but... I won't even teach about Jesus' Bible study. If you see Jesus' Bible study, he expanded things concerning himself. I'll teach that another day. Jesus' Bible study. Amen. So the real, there's no Christianity. Christianity is just jargons. They are trying to avoid the power of the cross. So they're looking for where they will be comfortable to say we are Christians. No, 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 no. What makes you a believer is the cross. Without the cross, it's useless so. So when I say the purpose of theology is Christology, I'm not talking about the man of Galileo. I'm talking about death, burial, and resurrection. Are you listening to me? So what makes us believers? It's the empty grave. You are born again because the grave is empty. That's what makes you born again. It's the empty tomb that gave birth to your life of faith. So anybody that's teaching Christianity without emphasizing the power of the cross, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. It says... Um, um, for the teaching of the cross is foolishness to them. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the what? So even the believer's salvation is the cross. The believer's power is the cross. The believer's assurance is from the cross. The believer's healing from the cross. The believer's deliverance from the cross. The believer's prosperity. The cross is everything. So anybody who wants to do Christianity without Christianity, they are plain. You go and learn, man. Don't do that. All right? You understand that? So what makes them really born again believers, Christian, is that they believe in the cross. So you cannot differentiate the cross from the believer. That's the core of our faith. That he died a shameful death so that we can live a glorified life. You understand that? Yeah, beautiful. Any other question? You have a question. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. How are you doing? Good to see you. So I'd like to ask, um, does God have a favorite? Yes. And 
why <laughs> and are grace are they different as well because you know you get situation where you say oh this person's grace is really really the person not get any grace when really grace is jesus okay. you have not just walked in that you know there are, all these pastors just like you know uh, they, they'll call it the god of all grace there are many graces the graces just stop it it's just manipulation if i want to feel special i say there's a particular grace no 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 that grace is christ so the Holy Ghost inside of me is not Holy Ghost Pro Max. It's not different from the one you have. So yes, God has favorite children. Do you know who are God's favorite children? The ones that believe that they are the favorite children of God. They are the favorite children of God. So like me now, I'm the, I'm the favorite child of God. You know why? Because I believe that I'm the favorite child of God. So it's to everyone who believes. That's it. You are the favorite child of God. But now, the person who's walking in that consciousness will have a lot of things happening for them that the one who just believes that you are just there. The devil doesn't want you to know that you're the beloved of God. The devil just wants you to think that God loves you. Or you're a son of God, but not the beloved. Matthew chapter 3, Jesus, the Bible says, the, oh, the heavens opened up and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. In chapter 4, when the devil was going to tempt him, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, the devil removed the beloved. Because the devil just wants you to think that you are just a son, but you're not the beloved son of God. So you must walk in the consciousness that I'm not just loved, I am the beloved of God. And God has capacity to put all of us in the belovedness. That's it. He can beloved us all. So God has favorite children, the ones who believe that they are the favorite children of God. Not the ones who behave. Because your problem is the, you become favorite because of the way you behave. No, it's because of the way you believe. Ask the prodigal son. He looked like the favorite child, right? Because he just knew that, ah, I can have this thing that my father has. But the other son was really, I can work for it. So some people want to work for this favor. Some of us just believe that we are favored of God. So you have two options today. Is that you believe that you're the favorite of God or you walk towards it? <laughs> Amen. Uh, you want to walk towards it? Oh, wow. Oh, you don't want to walk towards it. You can, do, you can add spice it with fasting of 21 days. <laughs> and add dangerous seed on top. Amen. Amen. And, and, and then, you know, they add 10 liters of the anointed oil. Soak yourself inside of it. Amen. <laughs> to become no but you just believe amen even heaven is not a reward for good behavior heaven is a reward for right believing glory to god amen so you see matthew chapter 4 verse 3 and when the tempt tempter came to him he said unto him if thou be the son of god command these stones to be bread you see this but see what the heaven said concerning him lord this is this is my beloved son. So the devil knew and just removed the beloved for me. I just put son of God. That's how he wants some people to be. And by the way, this guy is just, this guy is stupid, man, devil. Turn these stones to become bread. Turn law to be grace. He was sending a message there. Turn law to grace. Stone to be bread. So Jesus answered him, and both the stone that the builders rejected and the bread of life at the same time. That's it. Amen. Any other question or from there's a question behind. Let me hear from you, sir. Okay, there's a lady here too. Yeah. Let me hear from you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good, Good evening. evening, church. Good evening. So the question in the same theme of God's love for mankind, is it overstating the extent of God's love to say that without mankind, God's the Son and God's the Holy Spirit would not exist? that the purpose of Jesus, which is God made flesh, is the salvation of man, and the purpose of God, the Holy Spirit, is to dwell in the heart of man. Fantastic. And so if man did not exist, then there was no need for there was a trinity. For redemption. I agree. It's just the Father. It's just the Father. So the love of God is expressed is what because of the Son and the Spirit. Correct. Thank so, you, sir. So the Bible is the will of the Father, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit. That's why I keep saying that if you were the only person, Jesus would have died. So that's what you are saying. If you were the only person, that's all he needed. He would have died. So salvation is not a response to prayer. It's the gift of grace. Are you listening to me? So you don't pray to be saved. You receive salvation. Ah. 
You, also, you don't pray to be saved, Father, I want to be saved. No, you receive salvation. Because salvation is not a response to prayer. It's the gift of grace. What she's just saying is that the love that God has for man is what... This is really powerful. Jesus didn't die because God loves you. God, Jesus dying was an expression of the full love of God. It was God's love that sent Jesus to the cross. Are you listening to me? For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So Jesus was not alone on the cross. God was in Christ doing the reconciliation. What do you think killed Jesus? You think it's the beating? That's not what killed him. What really killed Jesus is separation. Every small thing, my, me and my father, me and my father, the only time the father turned his back at Jesus, that's when he said, ah, he died of a broken heart. Period. That's the first time he screamed, my God, my God. He's never called him God. He always called him Father. But on the cross, he shouted, my God, my God, so that you and I can call him my Father, my Father. So he took that exchange on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Like, I've not lived without you before. That's how he died. It's the absence of God because of the sin on his life. The sins of the world. You, are you understanding what I'm saying? Because he was carrying the sins of the world and God cannot behold iniquity. So at that point, God turned his back on, because he was the punishment. The punishment was coming, but saying, I can't see. That's how Jesus died. He died because of the absence of God. God turning his back at him because he took the full weight of sin on the cross of Calvary. What kind of love is that? What kind of love is that? Full blown. He took your sins on the cross. That's why when you say a believer will go to hell because of sin is that you don't understand the sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the sacrifice was powerful than the offering. In the New Testament, the offering was more than the sacrifice. So in the Old Testament, when you send the sacrifice, it will destroy the, the lamb. It will finish everything. This one, Jesus was still there. God had finished releasing, exhausted his, the wrath, the punishment on Jesus. Jesus was still alive. That means if there, if there are still more people, he still had space for it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Then on the cross, after he received it, he now said, I thirst. Not because he was looking for water. But they brought vinegar and gave to him. So that it would not be said that the children's teeth is put on the edge because their fathers ate sour grape. So he took the sour grapes on the cross, finished it, and then he said, you know what? Kura! Tetelestai! It is finished. Yeah. Even what is creamed on the cross was finished. Not it is finished too. It's because of grammar that they added it is. It is, it's not in the original thing. He screamed, finished. That's what he said. Kura, tetelestai. It's because of proper explanation when I put it is finished. He screamed, finished. And he was still alive. Then he left like a boss. He bowed his head and died. He gave up the ghost. They didn't kill him. He gave up the ghost. So he waited. He was totally done. And he finished it. The sacrifice of Jesus. One day when we grow up, we understand how come a tongue-speaking believer gets demons speaking out of him or her? Can a child of God be possessed? He's not in this church. He's not. He's though you. He's where you are going to. Umbo we in Chile, Sierra Leone. What's that name again? Is Umbo we Chile, Sierra Leone. Whatever that name is, it's not this. Is where are you? Where are you coming from? Where did you go? Don't go there. A believer cannot be possessed. Stop going to all those African magic church where they will now spend 45 minutes. You, you lay as demons speak to me. Ah, ah, we are three. We are four. The Bible says the devil is a liar and the father of lies. So once you tell a demon to speak, he's lying. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you, can you, God bless you. Devil, they speak, you won't hear truth from devil. Does it even make sense? The devil is speaking, you want to hear truth. When the Bible says he's a liar, that means liar, lying is his native language. Are you understanding? Yes, 
Mbowe, Mbowe. Sister Mbowe, please leave that church. Eh? <laughs> you are the offspring of your father, the devil. And you serve your father very well. Passionately carrying out his... See, he's been a murderer right from the start. He never stood with the truth. For he's full of nothing but... Lying is his native tongue. So I was not just trying to insult him. That is his native language. Do you, do you understand? That's his native language. So, how many of you are here? We are 14. Ah, I'm not come ah, I've seen some here. They're not members of a church. They're just strolling during those six hours of prayers. One will shout, ah, I will not come out. I see you. You think I will not say, they say, ah, I say, pee flu. See, today everybody will say, hey, talk. I'm there. I say, my friend, shut up. No time for tantrums. Get out of this place. You don't consult with demons. You send them out. You cast them out. You don't counsel what you should counsel. You understand? Egg balo, get out. So the dev, a believer can be oppressed and obsessed from ignorance. A believer cannot be possessed. Possessed means that devil and Jesus are sharing one apartment. No, it's not possible. So you're not possessed. So you say, come out, come out. Who should come out? The Holy Ghost should come out. No. But again, I will tell you because of, if, you, if you stay in that, if you're an intercessor, some, some demonic oppression looks so much like possession, but it's not possession. It means that the person has opened their soul so much to the devil. And the devil has a lot of deposit there in the soul. On Sunday in, in, a, in, in London church, we began to pray. <laughs> Oh God, we began to pray. Pastor Clarkson, there was this cardboard in that almost winter time. The whole place became hot. Oh, one lady was jerking. She came to meet me at the end of the service. Something came out of me. I know what I'm talking about. I say, yes. I saw it. He left you. On that one, say, I had like 20 something veils. I said, no, it's 100. He fell off. <laughs> So I know that there are some demonic oppression that will look like possession, but if the person is born again, and that's what, that's what prayerlessness does to you. That's what prayerlessness does. That you're open to pornography, open to all kinds of silly things. You're hanging, you're drinking, smoking, doing some debauchery. You're exposing your soul to a lot of contamination. That's what it is. But it does not mean that the Holy Ghost will not say, no, I cannot take it anymore. I'm leaving. No. <laughs> no, the Holy Ghost is still there. It's still to the day of redemption. He doesn't even have a choice. He's there. I'm not joking. He's locked up inside. Because you are locked up in him, he's locked up in you. That's his ass. He will be there. So after a while, you just hear one worship song one day, the Spirit of God will say, ah, opportunity. Because your mind will not start telling you you are the righteousness. That thing that condemns you is not the Holy Ghost. That's your conscience. But that thing that tells you you are better than this. God has made you this and brings you. So you now drag yourself to church without you knowing. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Mboe, that's not, um, leave that church. I know the church you're talking about. Uh, on Jubong, you're supposed to come around. Jubong, where are you? The other day during morning corona, you said Mary couldn't touch Jesus after a resurrection because he was in his glory. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. I didn't yet ascend to the Father. So what about the thief? Thief on the cross, when he, Jesus said unto said to him that day in that in paradise, and I said unto heaven first, and Jesus later went to where it is all there a difference between paradise and, he, and heaven. Ah, how do I where do I start to answer this question from? Okay, let me deal with the merry part. People, one thing about religion, it tries to victimize the women all the time. So we grew up knowing that they said to us in certain circles that when Jesus resurrected and Mary came and Mary was going to rush towards her Rabboni, Jesus said, don't touch me. And I said, because Mary was in a period. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I cannot understand for the life of me, the sick man who interpreted that. That's just crazy. It's the Old Testament that caused it though. 
he just got out of the grave. It was, look at the time stamp in scripture. Sunday morning, he was going to present himself. Someone I said, but Thomas touched him. Did you see eight days later? Eh? Eight days and he appeared again. So he was going to, that offering, offer his life, completing the full circle of resurrection. He was like, no, Mary, not now. Let me go to the Father. That's what he said. You saw the thief on the cross. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Okay, I get her question. Uh, I get her question. So she's now saying it's paradise, not heaven. Before that time, there was no heaven. It was the resurrection that opened heaven. Nobody was in heaven before Jesus. So what Jesus said to the guys are, me and you will see for paradise first before we'll go to heaven. Because nobody, even the Abraham and Co, they were in the holding place in paradise. They couldn't get to heaven before Jesus. Jesus is the man Jesus. So the landlord carried them into heaven. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's what David said in Psalm 24. Prophetically, lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up, ye ancient everlasting Lord, that the king of glory. So who is this king of glory? The person who left is a spirit. But this one coming is a human being. Because he was fully God and fully man. Then lift up your heads, O ye gates again, and be lifted up. You think they didn't have space in, in chapter 24? They just wanted to quickly know. <laughs> he now said, um, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. That's, that, now my house will be this. I'm the host, I'm not a guest. In the Greek or the Hebrew is Sabaoth, the owner of the place. He is the king of glory. And he goes Sila. That means they got the message. Like, ah, boss is back. Are you listening to me? So the reason he said they will meet in paradise is because heaven had not opened up. He had to go to Hades and release, preach, and then release those guys and they went to heaven together. So nobody got to heaven before Jesus because Jesus is actually heaven. <laughs> Jesus is heaven. Amen. Glory to God. Are you understanding? You have a question. For Mumbongay or Bimbongay? Look, you know. Good evening, Papa. Please, sir, help explain why Jacob switched his hands on Massa, Manasseh, and Ephraim. I may preach that on Sunday, so keep your fingers crossed. We'll see whether we can deal with that on Sunday. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. So stay tuned. I may do that on Sunday. If I don't do that on Sunday, remind me next week. I'll, I'll do it for you. God has crossed his hands. Okay, there's a, phone, there's a mic front and then there's a sister here. Amen. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, church. Good evening, ma'am. Um, this is my first midweek service ever. Oh, my God. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. And um, I heard about you from Tito the writer. Uh -huh. And I think I listened to like two of your messages. So I've not had this opportunity to ask any pastor this question. So my question is this. I love the way you um, dissect the word. And I love the way people are like, the Holy Spirit told me this, the Holy Spirit told me that. So how does that become a reality in a believer's life that the Bible is not just words and you're trying to break it open or you're trying to hear the Holy Spirit tell you this, the Holy Spirit told you that. So how does that become your reality? Okay, how does that become your reality? One of the things is that you must have, um, stand up, let me talk to you. Just, what's your name? Lalik. Lalik. You see the which Lalik. So next time somebody comes and says, Lalik, I will know that it's you. I've known something about you. That you put your Lalik. <laughs> yeah. When we talk for two, three weeks and you call me, I'll say, oh, hey, Lalik, I know who you are. So how do you come into that reality? By fellowship. Constant, how do you do that? Constant praying. And when you pray, trust what you're hearing is the Spirit of God. It's not, my mind was now telling me, do you pray in tongues, Lalik? Yes, I do. Fantastic. You're, you're already there. F okay, fantastic. So, Lalik, fantastic. If you pray in tongues, what you need to do is, uh, <laughs> is you really need to stay there and pray in very tongues and stay there. What, will do, what it will do to you, Lalik, it will open your spiritual ears. You start having promptings of the Spirit. So you when be, I think I can count in my fingers when I've heard the audible voice of God. One was secondary school days I was praying. Somebody stood behind me and it was clear. I, I turned. 
Ah. I said, yeah, that's the voice of God. And I went to the office. It was point blank. I can count, but every day is a prompting in my spirit. I know that it is God. There's a, there's, there's a voice. There's a knowing. I can't tell. It's just a knowing. I know that it's God. Yeah. But that comes from fellowship. So you, what I'm saying that you may not hear, lalik, 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 lalik. I am the God, 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 God. <laughs> no, you won't hear it like that. But you will just know <laughs> you just know in your spirit I felt led to do this thing I felt led to go to this place but that comes from praying in the spirit coming in meetings like this because let me tell you once you hang around people who hear from God they will jump on you no, I'm the, normally, when I hear people say I'm lost and they don't come to church how can you be found? Christ is the compass do you understand? I, I just feel lost and you're not coming to I don't understand it I just feel sick go to the spirit no you want the doctor to come to your house? Home service. But I'm just saying when you gather amongst people and just hear them speak, something will come on you. Their thirst, their experience will rub off on you. So what I'll say to you is keep praying in the spirit. There's morning communion. Join morning communion study. Get pray as you go. Stay with the word of God. Then enter into worship. I have life is a recommendation for you. Something will do you, you will do something. That's how, these are just simple steps. And when, when, when I get asked this question, I'm sure they're looking for some very theological steps. No, it's simple. Read your Bible, pray every day. That's simple, constant process. It's in its consistency, not in its intensity. It's always in the consistency. So I'm going to hear from you soon, Lali. Yeah, next. <laughs> yeah, I have a, the child. How, how old are you? Nine. You're nine. What's your name? Victoria. Victoria who? Good evening, Pastor. Good Victoria evening. who? What's your surname, Victoria? Aina Paduno. Fantastic, Victoria. What's your question? <laughs> oh. Victoria, can you ask your question, please? If Jesus took the sins for everybody who were alive, mm -hmm. did he take for people in the future because God can see the future and he knew all the sins we were going to commit. Man, Victoria, you're so intelligent. Because when Jesus died, he took the sins of past, present, and future. Because you are correct, he sees the future. And so Jesus died 2,023 years ago. And so if you accept him today, that same blood works for you now. Why do you think it won't work for you in 2052? So the blood of Jesus is eternal because you are right. God sees everything. So it's not if. It's a definite statement. Jesus died for the sins of the world and it is past, present, and future. You just have to receive this forgiveness by believing and putting faith in the finished work. Victoria, God bless you. That second name. Keep on. <laughs> Amen. You, you have a question? Okay, yeah. yeah shoot you. Let me have a mute. Okay, good evening, Pastor. Is your first time here or you're early? A newcomer? Time. Oh, yeah. I know you. I know my I know the newbies. Thank you for coming. Yeah, so um, you said that Jesus on the cross, he told the thief that um, the thief should, would meet him in paradise. Mm. And you said Abraham and Cole, they were in paradise. And when Jesus died, Jesus, let's say, opened the heavens. Th that's how he heavens opened up to yeah. those So what happened to paradise? Does it still Closed. Exist? Closed. There's nothing like that again. Okay. Jesus closed it by that. There's no paradisic department anywhere in the heavens. It's gone. They've moved to the permanent site. That was a temporary location. They've moved. It's closed. People still pray that they'll go to paradise and no, no, there's nothing like that. Paradise have gone there's no purgatory there's nothing like that he's appointed unto man wants to die after that absent in the body present with the lord not go to paradise yeah amen next next question are you learning something there's a lady over here amen glory to do i have anyone online 
Do I have another one on line? Oh, hold on a minute. Maya Kun Johnson, good evening, people. Could you shed light on spiritual fatherhood, spiritual ha, tribes as a thing in the body, knowing Jesus said in Matthew 23, verse 9, to call no man father. And we saw Paul call Timothy son. You see, you have your answer there. So, I am loud where the Bible is loud. And I, I don't stay on the fence on where the Bible is loud. I am quiet where the Bible is quiet. So, I hope I meet, um, you have my scripture, Simon. Something I do all the time. So, there's... Wait, wait, take it back. Wait, wait. There's spiritual fatherhood in the scriptures. But spiritual tribes, I have not seen it. That can be a man's coloration. But I don't see it in scripture. But spiritual, the tribe that we have, the tribe is in Christ. If any man be in Christ, that's one tribe. So there's no logic tribe in the spirit. And then there is um, XYZ church tribe in the spirit. And see if you don't belong to this tribe. Because that's what you're trying to do. But there's spiritual fatherhood in scripture. What I'm saying to you is that I'm a Bible man. What I see in Bible, I say. What I do not see in the Bible, I do not say. So let's go to your scripture in the book of Matthew that has confused a lot of people. Um, when Jesus is speaking, Matthew 23, 9, you, you, you put it up just now. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is heaven. Give me the next verse. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even in Christ. Next verse. Next verse. But he that is greater amongst you shall be your servant. So what was he talking about here? Jesus wasn't talking about spiritual father, spiritual mother. He was talking about the, um, um, what, the, Pharisee, the Pharise Phariseeistic system and the Sadduceistic system. Do not call these people in Israel your father and mother. Because they cannot pattern what I'm about to do. Jesus had not died. He was not resurrected here. So he wasn't saying all of us. You know this Matthew, Mark, Luke, John was not written to you. It was written for you. He was not talking to believers here. Because he had not died. The New Testament had not started. He was talking to these Jewish people. Because stop calling all these people your father. Because they were using Abraham to boo-boo him. That time. You remember that time? That's why I now said to them before Abraham, I am. That that man that you are calling father, who you the farms, the farms me. So he was trying to lecture them. Don't put faith in this Jewish leaders put faith in Christ. That's what he was trying to say here. This is not has nothing to do with um, spiritual fatherhood. No, that's not what it is. So you mentioned Paul called Timothy's son. And let me, who's your spiritual father? Let's start with that. There are many people that Paul called sons in scripture. So it's, it's biblical. Who's your spiritual father? How do you know a spiritual father? Um, the Bible says you have many teachers, but one father. Give me the scriptures. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ I have begotten you through... Now the word instructor here is called pedagogos. Instructor, instructors here is the word pedagogos. Pedagogo actually means babysitters. So he's saying, Tipiti, for although you could have countless babysitters, that's instructors, pedagogos. In Christ, telling you what you are doing wrong, you don't have many fathers who correct you in love, but I'm a true father to you. Watch this. For I became your father when I gave you the gospel and brought you into union with Christ Jesus, the anointed one. So how do you know your spiritual father? The one who showed you the gospel. The one who feeds you with the gospel. That's the spiritual father. Not the one who prays for your family every time. He comes around. That's not your spiritual father. See, our, our, our father in the Lord is here. From Oshobo, he's going to pray for all of us. No, 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 no. That may be your mother's spiritual father, but that's not. Your spiritual father is the one who feeds you with the gospel. I have begotten you through what? The gospel. Let's say the people he calls sons. I think Onesimus, Timothy, and uh, Titus. And unto Timothy, my own son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Philemon, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten you in bounds. 
Titus, I think there's one in Titus. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace and mercy and peace from God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's there. At the word of two or three scriptures, let every truth be established. So your spiritual father is the one who's responsible for nourishing you, feeding you with the gospel of God's grace. He shows you the material of the gospel, not the one who calls you to give you money. I, I was just in the spirit and I just saw you. Uh, be careful. As your father. No, 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 no. One of my boys was telling me that someone was calling him, you know, you can't have many fathers. Like, no, no, no. He's just trying to be manipulative. Who is showing you the gospel? That one is your father. The one who's just shouting is not your father. Are you listening to me? And, they, and in church, we have people who are fathers in the faith. It doesn't mean that they are your father. Yeah. But they are fathers in the faith and you must honor them. Come to LFC and LDC to help you. Next question. Good evening, Preflo. Oh, good evening. How are you? I'm fine. So I'm just three weeks here. Three weeks here? Yeah. I can imagine. How has it been in the last three weeks? Amazing. My brain literally recalibrates every time I'm in church because I'm trying to... Destroy know. all the... <laughs> all the struggles. I, I know how... You, I, think, I, I think it was Fumbi who asked me one time, how do I deal with even people in my family who don't even believe the gospel? I have, a, I have them in my family. Who, I mean, they, 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 they won't tell my members that our cousin is preaching hyper grace. <laughs> Just crazy people. But you stay focused on the gospel of God's grace. Thank you. So has it been in shock sometimes for you, right? Of course, of course. And I go about telling everyone I, I know about this church. Yes, this is my friend here. She's, She's here. bringing people. Yes, I have. Yeah, that, that's the effect of the gospel, is that you will shout about it. Yes. Amen. So if you're here, you have not brought anybody. Really, I did do you. It's, it's that you, are, you don't believe the gospel because gospel you will bring somebody. Of course. Are you a believer? Like that, that borders on your believerness. Let me hear from you. Okay, thank you. I have two questions. Okay. So I started joining Morning Koinonia this uh, Sunday after I came and I heard you talk about it. All right. Um, so t t on today, today you said something about um, that faith is believing, that faith is not the substance of things oh, hoped for. And I just want you to help me explain that um, Hebrews 11 verse 1. What does it really say? If, because it's kind of like contradicting with what I used to know about Hebrews I know. 11 verse 1. I know. And also, the second question is, um, Sunday, Pastor Larry said something. Mm -hmm. that um, um, So as, as we're praying, he said that, that um, some people ask, um, some pastors ask people to sow seed to provoke favor. Uh, yeah. So um, I, 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 I know that, or yeah, yeah. I believe that mm. um, people can give seeds to I change know. levels. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> My God! My God! I don't jump. Okay. Hey, My God! My God! <laughs> to change. My Jesus, I'm not doing well, old. I would only, I would only tear now. Say, I tear. Come on, come on. Ah, my God, my God, my God. Okay, so, next question. So, um, people, can you just help me um, highlight um, seeds to change level? No, no, not really to change mm. level, right? Mm. So, people can sow seed to change right? level. On what? <laughs> okay, okay. Are you ready with a level changing seat this evening? Do you have a seat? Do you have it? Bring it, bring it. A level changing seat. Fumbi, sell that car. Bring it, bring it, bring it. <laughs> tia, tia, come on, go and sell that to your fine car. Bring it. It will change your level. Amen. A level change. If it does not pay you, you will not pay God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if it doesn't pay you, you will not pay God. It has to pay God to move him. Because it's a um, uh, PDP chairman, BAPC chairman. Okay. So I should explain the what's that? Okay, faith. Ah, do LFC. I've, I've actually asked someone when. So she said that um, you will announce it when next I'm, year. I've I've done too many LFC this year. I can't do any LFC. I think it's next year. But let me help you. Okay. Faith is response to what grace has done. So faith is not strong mind. Faith is grace mind. So faith is responding to what grace has done. Are you listening to me? By faith are you saved? By grace are you saved? Through faith. So grace makes all things available. Faith makes all things obtainable. So if you buy through your phone, you buy 
something right now. You own it by grace, but you possess it by faith. So faith possesses what grace has already done. So your faith cannot cash out on anything that grace has not already done. So how do you enjoy faith? By knowing grace. Grace does not demand faith. Grace supplies faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of grace. So if you want to grow your faith, hear grace. That's how faith grows. Because faith is designed to respond to everything that grace has already done. Are you understanding it? So by the stripes of Jesus, you're already healed. It is faith that will now go and cash out on that healing that grace has already done. That's why they are called the two inseparable twins. That's what I call them. You understand that? When you go to Romans, when you go to Hebrews chapter 11, the most popular definition of faith, and, you know, a lot of people still quote it, even people in the Christocentric circle. But if you put Hebrews 11, for now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. See verse 2. For by it the elders obtain the good report. You are not the elder. How old are you? <laughs> for by it the elders obtain. So he's not talking to you. He's talking about, talking about the Old Testament people. Go to verse 38. Let me show you 38. 38 now says, hey, from 34, you know what I'm looking for? No? Okay. 30, 35. 36, 30, 37, 37, 38. Okay, 39. This all, and here you saying, and this all haven't obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. So if Hebrews 11 chapter 1 is your faith, you are saying you will believe God for something that you may never have. Because he says all these people who believed God like this in Hebrews chapter 11, they believed they had a good, but received not the promise. Because the, so how do I explain Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 for you? Hmm? Go to Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 1. Hebrews 11. Is that person hearing? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Keep it. Faith, what is the substance? Faith is the Jesus that they were hoping for that they did not see. Because Jesus is the substance. So, they, <laughs> so faith is the Jesus that they hoped for that they did not see. Because Jesus is the substance. So they all believed in Jesus to come and that was good enough faith for them. In that dispensation. But guess what? They received not the promise. 39. 11, 39. They received not the promise. 39. But see verse 40. Next verse. God having provided some better things for us. That they without us should not be made perfect. So what is the definition of faith? Right? Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about this great cloud of witnesses. Who are the witnesses? All those elders in Hebrews chapter 11. Sarah by faith. Abraham by faith. All of them did not receive Jesus. But they believed in him to come. So they believed on the substance that they hoped for, but they did not see. I'm teaching good. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, not sins. The sin is a definite sin. That sin there, this is not the scripture to preach fornication. Because they say, lay away the sin that does easily beset you. The sin here is unbelief. Because they did not believe in Jesus. That is the sin that was easily disturbing them, not believing in Jesus. Because Hebrews is a book of comparison. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What is the definition of faith? See verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Huh? 
can't pick that with a baseball bat. This is serious. Looking onto that looking onto Jesus is actually looking away from this. So in the original rendition, is turning onto Jesus. Looking away and turning onto Jesus, who is the author. Look away, that's it. From all that will distract to Jesus. Who is the leader and the source of our faith? If somebody is the author and finisher, what other definition do you want again? Author and finisher of our faith. And that looking unto Jesus is looking unto what Christ has done. That's that looking on the cross. You remember the Old Testament? They look to live. We believe to live. So the grace was on the cross, their sight was faith. So, you get that one right? So, this is um, provoking. This is seed. <laughs> Giving is always a response, not a trigger. Giving for the believer is always a response, it's not a trigger. If you can give God to trigger him, that means he can be manipulated. Yeah. And we didn't give him to the cross. That's the biggest blessing. We didn't sponsor giving. And God said, no, I can't take this anymore. What is this? Who did this sacrifice? Jesus, where are you? Not the hide. Come. Go die. No, it was nothing like that. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. So you must die. Come. Not the hide. Drag him. Drag him. Come. No. No. No city they give. No. You don't provoke me. No. No. And they are likely going to. You know all this is I'm teaching. You know it doesn't profit me. It doesn't profit my my kana, but it profits the kingdom. It profits us. Because I can like you know, I feel wholesome tea for your hand for this is your dangerous seed to stay up for November. Then we have provocation Sunday. Amen. Start with five million naira. Don't miss it. Come out. Come out after. I don't want you to miss out of it. If you have five hundred thousand, come. Oh God, fifty thousand. Where are you? Come, come, we'll come. Go to five thousand. Even if it's five hundred naira, come, come, come. I uh, will come go to five naira. Don't miss out. Na racket. God doesn't need that to bless you. What does it need that to bless you? Should you give, you give voluntarily. You sit down and you decide to give. Because you should give. That's responsible believer is giving. But it's not something that we should manipulate you to do. And pastors laugh at me globally that you are playing. You go so far away. You know they, that money, another pastor, they collect money. But I'd rather stay here and preach the truth and go to sleep well than to go home thinking that I've, I'm twisted something from your hand. So don't let any pastor do that to you. The Bible says every man should... Let giving flow from your heart and not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. God honors giving, don't be deceived. God honors giving, but it should not come from the place of you trying to trigger him. Yeah? And they're going to use that Solomon's example for you, that Solomon gave a thousand offering and God should have said, Solo! 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 Because of what you gave. No, no, no. Once they bring that, I can't sleep. So no, uh -uh. I cannot sleep. Angel, wake up. No, no. <laughs> you go, you're giving, give God sleepless night. I've been in a meeting with the pastor saying, you give something that God will not sleep tonight. God, until he responds you, the response to you, say, ah, yes. God, no, sleep tonight, I must give. It's so, all. <laughs> My God, don't they sleep before. He never sleeps, no slumber. It's not your giving that will keep him awake. <laughs> Normal level doesn't do that. But let me show you. When they show you that, tell them that Jesus is the sacrifice that has been released to God that made him release the graces of God upon our life. So I don't need to bring any other sacrifice than that which has been given. Glory to God. Another message transition. I want each of you to take plenty time sister and think over and make up your own mind that what you will give 
that will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting stories that touch. God loves it when they give her delight in the giving. So people have all those many, many scriptures that they will just bring out to just, as we are getting to November, there's the ember month, cloth, a finishing strong seed. Ah! I'll go walk with finishing strong seed. Hmm. 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 To, to finish it. <laughs> so no, that's MMM now that you want in the church. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not how it works. But you should decide. God will speak to your heart. God will tell you what to give. And you give generously. I wouldn't want to write, put a clause to our giving that please, in, as you are giving, please, we are, no, no, we are not entitled to any yama yama that you come and say tomorrow that is the money that you got from me that you give to us. No, it's a free gift. We did not put gun in your head to give it. Don't stress us. We'll put a disclaimer. To, I'm serious. I'm working on it. Because I don't want um, I don't want that stuff. Amen. Glory to God. Please, and you don't have to steal to give to impress anybody. No, 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 no. Don't carry, don't go and say your father's generator. Don't do that. Just give. Amen. Glory to God. Two questions so that we can close. Are you, were you blessed today? Yes. Precious, you have a question. You have a testimony. Okay, let me hear, hear straight to the point. One, two, three, then testimonies so we can close. You have another question? Ah, give them. Thank to you. be dangerous, dangerous so, um, prayer. I just, I just want to clarify something, right? In Malachi 3, verse 10, they say, uh -huh. you rob God? I just want uh, to. Yes. Uh, so can you rob God? Can you rob, rob him? Titan, hey, rob God. him. <laughs> so please let me get back. Oh, rob him. <laughs> You're robbing him. This guy, you don't take for back church, too. <laughs> you won't stress me. This you are coming for me a lot, have you? <laughs> Where you see God, Robert? Where you see God? Go on, rob him. At what gunpoint did you rob God? <laughs> that Malachi book not concern you. I can I show you something that says, if you try to open the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing, does it make sense to you? You that are seated in Christ, they're opening window to give you a blessing outside of the house. <laughs> are you not thinking? I'm serious now. I will open the windows and pour you out a blessing. A son is outside the house collecting from the window. Is that you? That's not you now. That should just tell you that that scripture is not talking to me. First, because I'm a son, I'm seated in Christ in heavenly places. I can't rob him. I don't want to rob God. No, at gunpoint, no. And if the tithe is too fivefold, now your children. Not, no, not dollars so now, 2,500. <laughs> Angel of God. Ah, now don't see God finish you. Angel of pastors. <laughs> A 4,000, 4,500. Now you're of God. Naira. <laughs> Naira. It's not even up to a dollar. Are you aware? <laughs> now you're of God like that. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. He's not talking to you. you know, just freely give. And... People who say this teaching will make people not give. Well, that's your problem. I believe that responsible believers should learn how to give. You just give. Check your envelopes in church. You won't find any tight envelope. Because we want you to just decide to give and not from stories that touch. Then generally you not plant that first fruit. Whole and strong. Strong. See, if the first fruit is good, your year is good. Amen. And just die. And don't blame God. Because you did not do your part for him to do his part. <laughs> if God be God, let God be God. <laughs> I think, I think, I think. If you now decide personally that I want to give my whole salary, God will honor you. But is this something that will come here and preach? No. That's not the truth of the scriptures. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. Amen. So you should decide. I want to give this, this Sunday. I want to be giving this. Salvation is free, but diesel is not free. Salvation is free, but this is not free. How are these things going? What of the repair? What of maintenance? Some of you live in houses. How do you maintain your house? 
It's not a work in the park. How are they doing it in this church? What's going on? Let me give to support the work of the ministry. That's the believer's mindset. Not, let me give to provoke God. To do what? He doesn't have um, mood swing. He doesn't have anger issues. Though. Please. It's not bipolar. Amen. Glory to God. Next, next, who has? Who's with? Good evening, Pastor. Straight to the question. Good evening, question. church. Okay. Good evening. Um, so I want to ask, um, also that the gospel has to be preached to the whole world before Jesus comes. So I want to know how would the um, gospel be preached? Like, how would everybody hear of the gospel? Then secondly, how can we convince um, pagans and Muslims to give their lives to Christ? Uh -uh. By preaching the gospel. Many of them are always like, no, they don't believe. Just at sow all. the seed. You've, that's all you need to do. And how will the gospel be preached to the whole world? When you start preaching, that's how it will fly to the whole world. You are on social media, you put it there. Jesus, that's how it goes to the whole world. That's how the gospel is being preached. You understand that? Yes. And see, when you preach to some people, you may not get the desired result immediately, but you have sown the seed. You know what the thief on the cross said to Jesus? Remember me today in your kingdom. That means he has heard about Jesus' kingdom before. Somebody don't tell him. But he still go thief after they tell him. They don't say, Mira, did the blood. You understand? When they call, I can't go for cross. He can say, hey, that message that year, oh, man. That brought Jamie this Above me, you remember me to live for Paris? Hope I believe you. I believe you there. Now your kingdom will not pass me by. You say today, man, you go bracket for there. But somebody had preached the king. Because that's why Jesus didn't preach to him. Somebody had preached already. He was responding at the cross, the seed that the person sowed a while ago. The bros J, above you, now. Remember me? Say, yeah, I remember you. That's the level. Next, I need to close the service. Amen. Okay, this, the microphone is here. Good evening, Papa. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good evening, yeah. church. So my question is about, it's centered around the promptings of the Holy Spirit when you're praying in tongues. Mm. And it was started by something I saw on Instagram. So a pastor was preaching and he said, sometimes we miss God trying to talk to us or the promptings of the Spirit when we're praying in tongues because we're stubborn. So he gave an analysis of, so you're praying in tongues and for some reason your mind starts to wander. You start to have random thoughts. So he's like, in that moment, God is trying to tell you something or the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something. But because you're so stubborn and like, no, I'm just being distracted. I need to continue praying. So I don't know. Is, is that Stop true? listening to all those um, Instagram pastors. Follow your pastor and stay there. <laughs> First. Secondly, what I'll say to you is, the point I, I, I may see him making is when you pray in tongues, the Bible says he that prayed in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. Howbeit you are praying the will of God. But sometimes whilst praying in tongues, God may be prompting you through your thoughts on this is what you should be praying about. Pay attention to it. And what that also means is that can also come to you by the reason of use that you have prayed a lot in the spirit to now know how God speaks to you. You are now sensitive to say, okay, this is exactly what God may be saying concerning this issue. But it comes with training. So it's not a black and white. It's like you're praying in the spirit, but as you're praying in the spirit. One time I was running around my estate jogging in the morning and I was praying for me, myself, and of course I. But as I was praying, my uncle's thought came to my head banging in prayers. It was just like a flash. So I ignored it. By the third time, because I know how God deals with me, I picked him up in the spirit and I started praying for him strongly. And as soon as I started praying for him, there was a mighty flow. So I knew that, okay, there was something in this direction. I got to my head that he was in coma. And I was, I was not scared. As soon as they called me, I said, don't worry, he'll be fine. He said, ah, you know, worry. I said, no, because God already sent me the mail, the memo. I was copied in this thing and I've dealt with it. Because I already had promptings in the spirit. But not, it was not because God shouted, Flores, Flores, pay for Kimana. No, 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 no. He was just in prayers. His thoughts came in my prayers too many times. So I said, okay, you know what? Let me pray about it. So it, it, that, that can be how God engineers your prompting system. You know how um, Samuel had God calling him, 
but what he was familiar to his default was Eli. He went to Eli. Sir, did you call me? It was the third time Eli was not hearing from God, but Eli had experience. Eli said, okay. The next time you hear this voice, say, speak for thy servant hear it. So he took Eli's experience to interpret his The only thing Eli did right was point that guy to God. Because the allies of our day will point you to herself. Okay, so that's, have I helped you? There's a question here. Um, okay, you have a question there again. Your second question today, let yes, me Yes, sorry about that. Um, last no, week, you made a side comment about James being a DJ. <laughs> What's the scriptural evidence? And... You were speaking in context of saying something really good he did was to show the knowledge of God, um, the nature, sorry, of God, how there's no shadow, no turning, no variableness. But you oh, mentioned oh, Historically, they'll tell you that James had no business being there just because he's Jesus' brother, so he made his way there politically. Yeah? Do you hear what I said? That James, when we call... Okay. When we call James the DJ in the New Testament, James was not clear on many issues. So if you read James, you need to read other epistles to know what James is saying. Like faith without works is dead. That's not to God, that's to man. But if you don't read properly, you will not understand what James is saying. That's what I mean. So James is the guy that is not a core apostle in the New Testament. It's Pauline, Petros, John 9. You won't see James. But what James did extensively uh, was show the nature of God in Christ. He did a fantastic job with that. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, many theological scholars say that James would not have been in the scripture, but that's Jesus' brother. So he's an elder. That's like, who's that? Who's talking on the mic? And that's how he got there. So one would mean that he's, uh, he's a DJ. He's, he's the one that is. Peter was even clear. On many, many issues. Peter, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but in corruptible seed by the word of God that lived and abided in you. So Peter understands New Testament realities. But you're not likely going to see a lot of New Testament realities in the book of James. That's what, that's what we mean by that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But he did well. He identified God in Christ. He did that one well. well. Any other questions so we can... Okay. Yeah. Good evening, church. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my question is from the four compartments of salvation. Yeah. Simeon, please, can you put it on the screen? Thank you. Um, I can... Thank you very much. So, I can clearly see the gifts of the Spirit being demonstrated in the abilities in Christ. Correct. So, my question is, how can we fit the fruit of the Spirit into this chart? The fruit of the Spirit is your identity in Christ Jesus. That's fruit of the Spirit. You can feed fruit of the Spirit here. Mm -hmm. Your identity in Christ Jesus. Um, love, patient, kind. That's who you are now in Christ Jesus. So you are not your flaws. This is who you are in Christ Jesus. Thank you, sir. So fruit of the Spirit here. Abilities of gift of the Spirit to be here. That's why I'm just telling you that even if you want to put anything here, it will fit into this box. The power demonstration is here. The spiritual maturity is here. It's identity. Inheritance is benefits. And their first spiritual benefit before their, their physical benefits. But all of them flow from what? Fish work. No, he showed it to me. I couldn't fault it. If it was something wrong, you will not fly on Sunday morning. I saw it before you saw it. Yeah, I don't play with my pulpit like that. No, I'm not that nice. <laughs> I'm not that nice. I don't play what I feed uh, my people. So I saw it before you saw it. If it was flawed, it would not even fly. I don't play with my pulpit like that. I'm not a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a just man. Amen. Amen. I'll give account for this work. And when I'm giving account, God will not call Pastor Larry will be flourish. Flo How did they preach that message? <laughs> Since I, I was in London that day, say, eh, eh, Really? I didn't know. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? So that's identity in Christ Jesus. That's where the fruit of this. You know, all those, even sexual confusion is lack of identity. It's lack of identity. I get to tell lots in this trip in the UK. It's lack of identity. When you speak with them, they have, there's a daddy, there's a, fa there's, an, there's a parental, there's something off happened somewhere. Not all of them, most of them, there's a, 
identity issue. Once you find your identity in Christ, you're fine. Because you'll be more of that identity than whether you want to be male or female. Is that you're in Christ. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That we anchor you properly than you trying to be... You, 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 are you understanding what I'm saying? So you'll be more passionate about your identity in Christ as against you trying to form another identity or create another identity or grab another identity and then force us to accept your identity. Just keep looking straight when you get home, nod your head. Any other questions so that we can close? Okay. Good evening, church. Good Fresh evening, is, this, is this a testimony? Or a, yes, it is. Okay. Good evening, church. Um, so my testimony goes like this. Uh, um, a couple of months ago, um, you said something just now that when you're lost, you come to church. And yeah. when you're sick, you go to church. Why don't you want to come to church? Why do you want church to come to you? Yeah. So a couple of months ago, I was, feeling a very, I was feeling a bit lost. And I came to church one Wednesday service, and I sat down next to Fumbi right there and you know pastor Flores was preaching and i didn't even understand what was going on in church because they were answering questions like this and i was like i was going on and then pastor Flores spoke about lfc and she said oh i think you should join lfc it's really nice and you too said join lfc i was like ah, a few people know the problem i'm going through what's lfc what's my business at lfc right now like i'm looking for money and have a couple of problems in my life and then that saturday i came to lfc and I was like, ah, if this LFC thing is boring, I'm just going to go home, you know, because I have problems. My problems are more than what we're teaching in class. And as God will have it, I was randomly sitting down, and they were like, you guys have to elect a class prophetess. And then someone just mentioned my name. I was, I was like, precious. I was like, from where to where? Me that I'm not coming on <laughs> Monday. Why did you guys make me class prophetess? And nobody even knew what I was going through that time. I didn't even know what I was going through. And, you know, I had gotten my visa and I was supposed to go and visit my aunt in the US and I was just like, you know what, I need money. So that's how I was coming to church, honestly. I was like, God, just give me money. I need money to travel, you know. And like before, I used to go to church only like three times in a year, beginning of the year, you know, middle of the year, crossover service. So that day I walked into church on Wednesday, I really was lost because I wasn't having things my way. And I, I would literally say I was a sport Christian because... Things are going smooth. You don't see me in church. The moment something just goes bent like this, you see me kneeling down. Yeah, I say, God, Alpha, please come. So, you know, I if was you're coming. If you like for that, <laughs> change your ways. <laughs> come so to LFC. So after that first LFC class, you know, I still had the problems and I was always still praying to God. But by Wednesday, because it was a one-week stretch, by Wednesday, I realized that I'd even forgotten why I started LFC. You know, I started, like, sitting in front row. I was literally really, like, carrying book and saying, wow, actually... The gospel is actually really interesting, and I forgot about my problems because they weren't really problems to me at that point in time. So instead of me to be thinking of, you know, how I was going to buy a flight ticket in two weeks, I was thinking of how I was going to pass my LFC. You know, I was reading at night. I forgot. When I say I totally forgot, I was always here by six, five o'clock. What am I saying? Five o'clock. Pastor Flores should say, oh, class is for 5, 4.30, I've already left work. I'm, where are you going to? I'm going to LFC. People at work are always looking at me like, something is wrong with you. And then one day I gave a testimony about how God had blessed me with the spirit of discernment, about how one of my staff was stealing and she was lying and I was telling her straight to her face that, babes, you're lying. And everyone was looking at me like I was crazy. Fast forward after LFC, I was not like, ah, okay, this LFC has finished though. I was sitting down on my own and someone just randomly called me before then, I was always asking people that I work for, oh, I need my like, payment up front, I need to travel for summer. And they were always like, you know, the economy is bad. I said, I was going on, on top of money that I earned. You know, this is the money I deserve. This is my own work, my hand work and whatnot. And then I just gave up. I finished LFC class and then someone just randomly called me. I was like, oh, I want to send you money. And the person paid for my full flight. As if that wasn't enough, I paid for the flight. I was happy. I was like, oh, my flight has been bought. I got to the airport, randomly strolling the... I was at the executive line and someone just walked up to me and was like, ah, precious, a long time no see, please give me an account. I feel led to send you money. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> it, it gets better. I traveled throughout my weeks. I stayed one month and two weeks in Houston. And every single day, I was receiving credit alert from Nigeria for random, not money that I work for, free money. People would just message me, ah, you having fun? Let me send you money. Ah, you having fun? I'm going to send you money. And I thought to myself, what would have happened? 
what would have happened if I didn't come that Wednesday? What would have happened if I didn't join LFC? The devil really tried, but he couldn't. So if you are looking for a sign, or you are going through anything right now, the problem is not really a problem, right? The problem is you don't know who you are yet. Because you can never lack. You know, my hands are always full. I can never lack in my Pastor Flash, are you? <laughs> Nothing goes against me, you know. So, yeah, that's my testimony. Precious. This is good. Put God first. God, let me tell you, and this is the problem with people have you think your problem is bigger than the gospel your problem isn't bigger than the gospel the gospel is powerful and i think you should cherish the is the power of god so i just got a message from one of our online viewers i am sitting here watching this service and there's tears in my eyes where has this message been to go through all that church hurt and confusion and finally be here is something else i'm home thank you people Amen. I'm telling you the truth. It's, there's something going on here and it's the power of the gospel. I want to close by letting you know that God really, really loves you. God, God loves you more than you love yourself. Do you know that? God loves you because you think that you love yourself and that, so you start trying to protect yourself. But God loves you more than you love yourself. And God wants me to tell somebody, I love you and have sorted this thing out. And God is saying, if you come in my love and walk in this love, everything will be sorted out. Because right now, I'm talking to people who feel like, carries down not that we perish. Are you not seeing that? This thing don't over me. Are you not getting the message that they're about to throw me out? Are you not seeing the signs already? Do I need to shout at you, God, for you to get the memo? And God is saying, relax, I love you. I got this. I got this. And I want you to relax and rest in the love of God. Rest in the love of God. And it's not because we spoke about prosperity in that class. We just taught the grace of God, taught the message. Grace knows what to do. And grace knows how to sort you out. I want you to be very confident. You know God loves you more than the devil hates you. Say it again. Say it to, say it to him. Say God loves me more than the devil hates me. Say God is so in love with me. Say it again. Say, God is so in love with me. Shout it. Say, God is so in love with me. Tell your neighbor, do you know I'm God's favorite? Tell your neighbor, do you know I'm God's favorite? Can't you see that I'm God's favorite? Say, I'm God's baby. Say, Lord, I'm God's baby. Say, he's so in love with me. Say, he knows all of me and loves me regardless. Do you know there are people who have heard about you? They heard something about you and they already hate you already. Not because they even know. They just heard something about you and, and they hate you. But God knows all of you and loves you regardless. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are people who just hate you because they heard something about you. That's not true. Oh, they, that you, just, some of you just hate. Just don't, do you have those people in your life that they just don't like you? And you wonder, what did I do? They hate something about you. And so they hate you. God knows all of you and loves you. I want you to know this. He loves you. He loves you. And he sorted it already. He sorted it already. He sorted it already. That's somebody's word here. That's what you wanted to hear. And that's why I jumped on that plane this morning, did six hours flight from London, just to tell you this, that God loves you. Simple, powerful message. God loves you. I want you to walk out of this place knowing that, you know what? I'm not perfect, but he loves me. I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. He loves me. And because he loves me, he's responsible for me. God is a responsible lover. Responsible lover. Glory to God. Bow your head as you, if you're sitting, man, shut up, pray in the spirit. And I, 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 don't, I don't want you, I, what I want you to do in this prayer is, Father, I receive your love. Because I think it's difficult for believers to. He loves 
me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Seated, I just oh, I receive your love right now. My lover, how you love me, how you love loves me, oh, how he loves me. Wait, wait, wait. There's somebody here God is giving a new job. You're here. You're right here. There's a job. My darling, you're You Bring this woman crying here. There's a woman behind you. Bring her. Bring her, bring her. Yeah. Yes, sir. You give me your life. You love me. There are like four women around here. God is saying, I'm giving you a job. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are not left. You are not abandoned. You are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. In Jesus' name. You are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. You love me thank you, Mera. Thank you, Mera. You're the reason I came today. Sha! Oh God, no, I can't go into this thing. And uh, There's somebody whose parents abandoned you. You've never felt loved in your life. Somebody whose relationship he just walked out on you. And then there is just this. There's somebody in the guilt of what you have done sometimes in your past. And God is saying to tell you, I have forgiven you. And I love you. And I don't want you to leave here without you knowing that you are loved by God. Everyone just your prayer this evening so that I, I don't care if you're a deacon, bishop, pastor I receive your love because some of us pastors we talk about this love but we are not able to sit and just receive this love in the last one week that's all I've been Father, you love me this thing I'm dealing with with this church cannot kill me No, you love me Lord, you love me Lord, you love me if you don't have any prayer to say, it's Father, you love me. Let the devil hear you. Father, I, I know you love me. Lord, I know you love me. Lord, I know you love me. You love me more than As Mera sings, I want you to pray in tongues and just say, Father, I know you love me. My my Just pray. My darling, you're enough for me. Pray. You love me more she. than anything. Oh, 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 Give me your life. You you're not forsaken. Me. You're not forsaken. More than my mind can You're not fathom. forsaken. You I remove the load off your than, shoulders. More than ah! Church, pray, 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 pray. My darling, you I declare all your sins I have forgiven. Me. You love me more than the recipient of the love of God. Oh Are you praying? Anything, oh Lord. The love of God. Yeah. You get me your life. You love Thank you for your love. Me. Thank you for your love. Everywhere. Everywhere, thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Somebody just receive his love. We're done. More than anything. Receive his love. More than anything. Receive his love. My love. How you love me. My darling, you're enough for me. You love me more than anything. You give me your life, you love oh, me, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. More than my mind can fathom. Oh, you love me, 
Jesus. You love me more than Richard, you are loved by God. You are loved by God. You are kept by God. How you love me. All your sins are forgiven. Your past is out. You love I said me your, your sins are forgiven. More than my mind can fathom. More than my mind can comprehend. Can you receive his love, please? Lord, you get me your life. You are forgiven. You, love you have his life. More than my love of God. Manta Bakabe has good You love me more. Come on, church, can you pray? More than anything. More than anything. Open up your mouth, my lover. You love me. Father, thank you for loving me. For God demonstrated his love towards us that when Christ died on the cross, that was a demonstration of his love. You love me more than any. One more time, receive his love. Receive his love. He gave me your life. You love me, Jesus. More than my mind can fathom. Lord, you love me more. God says, I'm loving you out of your you mistakes. Love. I'm loving you, you love. out of your mistakes. You love. My God, can you feel this you sweet love. presence in this room? You I'm love. loving you, you out love. of your mistakes. Whoa. I'm loving you out of your mistakes. I'm healing you. I'm healing you. I'm you healing love. you right now. The love of you God. Love. The love of God. You love. The love of God. Make sure Resco prehendo fokoski mara bende vehens kubus ana mara toski pre he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us the love of God binds your mind together shabakando vekere disco prehendo the love of God oh, heals your mind today. The love of God makes oh, you whole. How he loves the love of God us. sets you oh, free. How he loves the love of God makes you whole. Oh, he the love of God us. sets you free. Oh, how the love of he God heals your us. mind. Oh, the love of God restores your soul. The love of God restores oh, your life. Shoot the Bahanda Kabaha. Everyone he pray in the spirit. Come on, man, talk over the head. Scooby. Rita Bokon de Vito Skiba. Raski Bohoske Bread. Your life is not wasted. You are not a non entity. In the name of Jesus, we command the dreams to come alive. We command your future to come alive. We destroy How the addiction of, of any kind. We decree oh, that you are free right now. That the love of God consumes oh, in the name of Jesus. Everything that does not glorify oh, God. Yes, by the me, power Jesus. of the Holy yes, Spirit. I decree that the chains are now broken. I decree that the addictions are lift off. I decree that your mind How is saved. I decree that your life is productive. In the name of Jesus, we decree the restoration of your mind. In the name of Jesus, shut up, come on, the boros. You have life. Oh Jesus, on me a model to be called yours, to say your image divine. I hope you're praying, church. There's something. There's something here. To be a day. Receive his love. Don't let the devil remind you of your mistakes. Christ has forgiven you. Forgive yourself this evening. I feel the lift, the love of God in this room. You are my father. Oh, what love you have left. Shut up, commandos. On me, a model. Shit. Uh, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed in Jesus' name. You are free. All your sins are forgiven. Everywhere they've taken your name to, we decree to shut up now in the name of Jesus. 
but there is therefore now no enchantment, no divination in the name of Jesus. To be a day that I know, recap and mouse to be the way. Oh, resurrection power, everything that is dead comes back to life. Jesus name. Dance in the rhythm of your Jesus name. Can everyone pray in the spirit? And so pray in the key verses. Dance in the rhythm of your heart. Dance in the rhythm of your heart. Every plan of the enemy to take your life is aborted. Every plan of the enemy to frustrate you to the point where you take your life is aborted. I command your life and your light to shine in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands, oh, you get. We release this one from the cross. For the peace of God in the name of Jesus. you give yourself away? Thank you, Jesus. Don't stop praying, everyone. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself for me. a minute i want to pray for people who are dealing with depression depression run out run out run out i want to pray with you depression is just sign lack of the love of god i'm serious run out run out run out run out. this is the point where those of you who always have something important to deal with you can leave okay you have something important it's fine but i sense that heavy yoke of depression and what deals with depression is the love of god 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 some of you here have contemplated suicide nobody knows it has crossed your mind let's just end it nobody knows you're here you're here this is why I had to come today and I don't want you to leave this altar with the depression going back First of all, the Spirit of God wants you to say, stop identifying with depression. No, it's not a flex. It's not a flex. Stop identifying with it. It's not a flex. Oh my God. Yeah. There's some you here, it's uncontrollable tears. Drop that body in here today. Don't go home with it. Don't go. The Spirit of God spoke to me whilst I was coming today. God, I feel tired, but I, there's a burden in my heart. If you're here, you're not saved, you're not born again. Let's deal with that this evening. You all can leave if you have. And those special people that have something to do. But God is dealing with something. Receive the love of God. She bada gives to me. She de beke vede prehes kuskus. Rapatem bendos kusku. Some of you need to forgive yourself.
coming after me There's no one you won't kick down Lie won't tear down Coming after me Oh, oh. No shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me you all need to forgive. Some of you need to forgive yourself. Man, talk up for us, keep it. Sheba na mandros kupre. In the name of Jesus. All of you in front, say this after me, Lord Jesus. I cast my cares upon you. I receive the joy of the Lord. I receive the love of God. I decree I do not identify with depression. I forgive myself because you have forgiven me. All my sins are forgiven. I receive your love today. I decree delay is over. I decree I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. Thank you because depression has no space in my life from today. In Jesus' name. Here is what I want you to do in the next two minutes. Drop that body on this altar. On this place. Say, Father, I leave this matter here and I refuse to go home with it. I'm going to rest and I'm going to sleep. There are like four men in the crowd who should be here. Four of you who should be here. Four men who should be here. You, you've been dealing with that. You're dealing with that. You should be here. Cabanandre Josefe Terezi Soprehentos. Zikrotofele Berehens. Tufila Berehens. Kotofele Berehentos. I decree light shines in darkness. This is not the end. Light shines in darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of G light. In the name of Jesus, the light will liberate. Come on, the yokes be destroyed. The yoke be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, the yoke is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, the yoke is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, we decree peace. We shift the burden off your life. We decree peace in the name of Jesus. All your sins are forgiven. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. 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 You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You are forgiven. Forgiven. Forgive yourself. The shadows. Of darkness the burden lifts off you in the name of Jesus thank you because the light of God prevails over your life you are a star you are going to shine you're not a mistake you're not a non-entity God has purpose and plan for your life we decree you're free right now in Jesus name thank you Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit peace My God, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, name of Jesus, my Katabandos. Loose your groups and hold. Come out now. Peace in the name of Jesus. You will live and not die. Red grace to you in the name of Jesus. Red grace in the name of Jesus. Bring him up. Bring him up. Bring him up. If I've laid hands on you, you can go back. But drop the burden here. I rebuke the spirit of depression. 
out from your life. You won't kill yourself. You won't kill yourself. You won't kill yourself. Not you. Not you. You're free. You're free. In Jesus' name. Wait up a minute. So I saw God smiling at you. And so the things that are troubling you are not troubling God. Because he knows the end from the beginning. It's that you have to relax. So you can't fast track this process. Are you listening to me? You can't fast track this process. Calm down. God knows what he's doing. God is smiling at you. God is rejoicing over you. So God is not tensed. Don't be a control freak. You can't control everybody and control God too on this issue. You flood your heart with peace as you enjoy Jesus. And then what you are pursuing will start pursuing you. Congratulations. Amen. You are my strength. Strength like no. People of God, Nigeria can be interested now with the, with the Naira rate. You must anchor your life, your joy, your strength in the finished work. Or else, depression will creep into your heart. But the Bible says, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there's a lifting, there's a lifting up. Somebody said, there's a lifting up for me. Say it again, there's a lifting up for me. Come, come. Okay, run, run, yeah, come, come. Yeah, I don't do this all the time. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you come on. The strength like, no. Yeah, that's it. Reach it to me. Somebody say, you are my strength. You, let's sing the, you are my strength. You are my strength. I can hear you sing strength like, strength like no water. Strength like no, strength like no water. So riches to me, riches to me. Sing you are my strength. You, you are I can't hear you. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, my God, I command your star to shine. In the name of Jesus. Leave it, leave it. I command your star to shine. In the name of Jesus. I contend, I rebuke every cloud that has covered your
I can't hear you are done. Your son so nice. You are not weak, he's your strength. Sing you are my strength. You are my strength. You are my joy and sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I rebuke the spirit of depression. Joy has come. Sing in the fullness. In the fullness. Of, in the power. You lift me up. Yes, you did. I said it's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. So you are in the fullness of your race. In the I said it's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. You Congratulations here. Congratulations. Congratulations. In the fullness of your grace. Aya. Oh my. Don't do that. I hear congratulations here. I hear congratulations here. You run to me quickly. Run to me quickly. Yata.
Boosh, he's no. You are my joy. Can you scream now? You are my joy. Joy. Release. Holy Ghost. Joy in my Joyful people, joy has gone. Like 
somebody shout you are my strength one go you are I can't hear you I can't hear you just the drums just the drums just the drums I want you to shout to get the you devil man. You are my strength. Oh. Hey. Oh God. Hey. Command your life to emerge. I hear the emergence emerge. I can't hear you. I want to hear you shouting. Oh! Not like the world can give for Jesus. That's it. That's it. What you're saying is that you're not weak. What you just said is that you're not weak. What you just said is that you are strong because He is your strength. One more time, sing. You are my strength. 
One more time. Strength like riches. One more time. Sing. I can't hear you shot. You are liver, 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 liver. I love it. Pusha. Kapatandes. Oh. Clap your hands, church. Give God praise. I can't hear you. If you know joy has come, strength has come, peace has come. Jump if you have to jump. Clap your hands if you have to clap. Turn around if you want to. But whatever you do, don't stand still. I sense the power and the glory. Of the Lord in this room. My God. Ah. We got to close. Jesus let's give to the Lord let's give to the Lord ah thank you thank you you miracle your name your name this is a six hour setup oh let's stop oh. come for the your name there's a place there oh my god my god Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, gee. Ah! I will restore, says God. All the years that the canker woman, the caterpillar. I will restore, says God. I will restore with compensation, with promotion. There's a word for somebody. Come, Mandarski. Ah, she. Kopo. Alamash. Your name, your name. G. G. What manner of man is Jesus? Hey. Oh, what man of man? Jesus. Let's give, let's give. Father, we give you praise. Gabriel, welcome to more than enough. Your days of not enough are over. For it to be said in your house that your faith counts. That your faith in Christ counts. In the name of Jesus. Open your hands. Father, thank you. Everyone give. The account details are on the screen. If you have money, cash, you can, you can drop it in an envelope. Don't miss Sunday morning, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And I think next week, Wednesday, six hours prayers. Is it right? Father, thank you. Have you given? Father, increase the works of their hands. Divine announcement, divine endorsement, testimonies all around in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's put our declaration. I'll see you on Sunday. Tomorrow morning, I'm repeating Romans chapter 4. 
I rushed it this morning because I had to catch the flight to, to Lagos. So I'll repeat Romans chapter 4 tomorrow. It's really a powerful, powerful um, chapter. 7.30, get your friends to jump online. If you're hearing this for the first time, you're wrong. You've never joined morning. 7.30 a.m., the Logic Church IG page, IG Live, Romans chapter 4. It will help you 7.30. You will learn something. Glory to God. Let's put our declaration. Then Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Hi. Pastor Larry, thank you for Sunday morning. Thank you so much. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's make the declaration if you're ready. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. All of my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my... God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is... Let's share the goodness together and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Point your prophetic index finger at your neighbor and say, Surely God's goodness and mercies are following us all the long days of our lives and we are the dwelling of the Lord forever. It's your boy, Dr. Flores Peters from the Logic Nation. Never forget, God loves you more than the devil hates you. See you tomorrow morning, 7.30 and Sunday morning, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Have a flourishing weekend ahead of you with great grace. Blessings.